Uh, Anything goes on there. Oh, cool. From sundown to beautiful autumn in Vermont. There are Kaylee out there. That's my brother. We're doing good. Hey, it goes. How's your temperatures up there, man? Ours is dropped. We got a good cold front going on here, man. It was 57, 57 degrees this morning. Ooh, it's chilly in here. We ain't used to it. Uh, you're up in Vermont. You're way up there. You should be already chilled now. <clears throat> All right. Let's wait on a few more people to get up on here and we'll get going. And uh, there's William Cruz, man. How you doing, bro? It's going to be a pretty dis good discussion. If you guys can tell, I'm wearing a bag on hoodie in the house. <laughs> it dropped, man. Uh, beautiful, almost perfect 70. Sometimes during the day, cools off at night, no lower than 55, 60. That's what we're getting right now. It didn't hit 70 today. It hit about 66 today. But we, like, we've had a massive cold front. I mean, last weekend it was 88 degrees, 100% humidity. I was camping, bringing wet. Where was this weather then? <clears throat> you know, I mean, this is the weather. Put the hoodies on and the campfire gets good. Last few events I went to, you couldn't get 10 feet next to the fire and water. You know, it was cooking. <clears throat> So Rome's a lot. Hey, man. How you doing? It's a cold outside. Definitely. I switched to wearing coats. You ain't kidding, man. And, and come on fast. That's the thing. <clears throat> uh, th this is good weather right here. I mean, this is this is when the squirrel season, our squirrel season's been in, but it's hard to hunt when it's 90 degrees out here, 150 degrees. Uh, anything over 75 is too hot. I almost agree with you on that. Uh, but yeah, guys, we got some people on there, but where I, you know, I told you guys last weekend I was going to uh, Midwest Woodcrafts. Uh, Kevin Johnson, he puts it on out there. It was about a close to six hour drive from me. Uh, great place, great location. I mean, it's all flat for miles you get around it. Uh, nice setup in the woods he had. It was a uh, flat area, plenty of tents, uh, more enough trees, plenty of shade. Uh, we did get in some hot temperatures, a lot of high humidity. Uh, so, whoops, you know, where's you out pretty good? Hey, TTW. Hey, man. I'm going to call you TW. Uh, but that's where I was. Uh, put on a trapping class. Uh, when I got there, I got up like 4 in the morning to get there. Uh, it was a long day. We had a trap class inside. Well, it was a wonderful time. I had a blast, man. Uh, we ended up. You know, scheduled for about an hour class, just you know, get the basics, get the, the people never trapped into it. And we was up there two and a half hours. It was like 1130 before we left. We set up a lawn chair or folding chair on the table and set the snares and everything. I think we had a pretty good time. We had a pretty good turnout. Uh, it was actually a pretty good turnout. Really good. Uh, it was. Anything goes. It was, oh, it was a last minute thing. Kevin's been bugging me the last couple of years to get out there. I've been swamped. Uh, you know, I talked to my wife. We had uh, you know, freed up some time, and, and she said go. And she was supposed to work that weekend, and then the last weekend, and that canceled. So she had a three-day vacation for me. <laughs> but uh, it, it was okay. It was, it was a lot better than okay. It was a good show. It was a good time. Met some people. Uh Met some fans of the channel. You know, that was cool. Uh, you know, like I said, I put on my trap class. I did a lot of filming. I'm compilation, compilation, compiling uh, all the video I took. That was one of my goals is to get really good at my video. Uh, I'll take all the video out here and stuff like that. Uh, uh, you know, so I, I want to do that. I was running two cameras set up. I was out there with my buddy Trapper, Jan, Trapper Dan. He'll be on here. Uh, and his wife, Cody, and the little kid, Henry. Uh, me and him probably loaded a ton of rocks out of gravel in this little big toy dump truck. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to have it's, – it's fun, man. Watch a two-year-old kid just play in the dirt. Uh, uh, let me see. Tom, 70, 77 here today. Oh, man. 
There's Bo. How you doing, brother? <laughs> Metric weather doesn't count. Yeah, 35 degrees as a base, and the 42, 43 in peak summer it makes hard for those tents. And that that's what the night discussion was about because uh, <laughs> it might be snowing in the hobble. Then you ain't kidding, Tom. Uh, it's a uh, that's what the discussion was. I got a couple uh, messages and uh, from, well, one of them was Blackie Thomas, to be honest with you. He said, man, we're going to Central Hall less than three weeks from now. I'll be there Thursday morning. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event. And this will be my, I'm thinking, fourth year there. And maybe third or fourth. It's one of them. I can't remember. Uh Yes, and it goes six more weeks to snowfall. When I work for the state, I you know October fifteenth is when it's usually right on schedule. After that, anything goes. And then, uh, uh, but I've seen it snow October fifteenth, and this is right during this this event. And it, and I've had a couple questions and private messages and stuff. What to wear? Well, we're in Ohio, and. The first year me and Randy went, it was about almost 80 degrees. We were wringing wet. I set up a super shelter. I thought, man, this thing's going to be hot. Uh, I had my screen on the front. I didn't build a fire. We had a fire to cook with. About 2 o'clock in the morning, it drops, starts pouring down rain, and then turns the snow on. Overnight, we probably lost 40-some degrees, 50 degrees overnight. So them cold fronts in Ohio, we're in one right now. It's come down. At, I've seen William Collins post like 50 degrees on Texas. So that's what we're in. Uh, so that's that's what I mean. So the tonight's discussion is, you know, this is what we get called out in. Uh, Trapper Dan, he, he crawled in this hammock uh, uh, Saturday night, you know, because it's so stinking hot, so humid. I mean, you just walk around just shining. Your skin's just soaking wet. So you wipe down and you get down and – because of my back, I have an underquilt and an over blanket and a, actually a quilt protector on my hammock and my over my actual quilt blanket. And I usually don't have to have that. It's just for my back, you know, keep the wind off that steel on my back. And I don't know what time it was, 4 o'clock in the morning, trap down yourself's hammock. No bug net, we didn't need it. Uh, no insulation underneath him. You know, just a, oh, what blanket did he have? It's a good blanket. Uh, we'll tell him on there. And it was, uh, yeah, yeah, we were melting Cody. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but he got cold. He got cold and went in, the, went in the tent. So it shows you, you know, man, you know, being at, without an underquilt on your hammock, it, it was, and, but it was 80, 88 degrees, 100% humidity. Jungle blanket, that's it. There you go. And he said, man, it, it did a good job, but it just couldn't stand it no more. He had to get up. Uh, because our bodies acclimated to 88 degrees. I mean, I got out there, and before I got my hammock set up, which takes 15 minutes, I was really wet. Uh, and then you you think, well, okay, it's going to drop down to 77 degrees at night. Well, you're used to 88. You drop 10 degrees, you get chilly, especially when you go to sleep, your body slows down and doesn't create the heat. So, uh, yeah, Todd said, we'll be back up in the 80s. Yeah, look, we'll be back up in the 80s. Uh, in probably eight eight days now, uh, we'll be high in the 70s, 77, 78 degrees. Uh, bikini's doing the day, but it's just a night to keep warm. You ain't lying, and that that's the problem. Where where I live, it can it can just up and down so fast. So you know, we all talk kit mentality, and we all talk you know having a backup plan. But you know, hypothermia can can occur. You know. If you're at 88 degrees and it would drop to, you know, mid 60s, you'd be shaking pretty hard if you didn't have anything else extra to put on, uh, or growing a good fire, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it was a uh, that was it was a good discussion tonight. And like I said, Blackie called me, man, what do I wear? I said, man, wear your layers. Uh, we're all technically car camping guys. Don't worry about running heavy. I know I'll, you know scare us on some room sometimes. But there's nothing more miserable than shaking all night long trying to stay warm. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the most miserable nights I have when you're sitting there just, you just can't get warm. And and my body is not acclimated. It's been hot this summer. Uh, 
And so we, uh, uh, you know, so you have to acclimate your body to the temperature. And so I'm, I actually still got shorts on. I finally put my hoodie on. Uh, I won't turn the heat on in the house right now. Starting to try to get used to it because here it comes. We're going into fall. But, you know, like you people down south in Florida and stuff like that, you know, my mom lives down there. And you guys don't have any heavy winter clothes. Coats on, stuff like that, gloves. Uh, for me to get ready to sleep around 50 degrees in a hammock, let's just call it 50 degrees, uh, I'll have my winter clothes on. And I'll have my blankets on and everything. I'll have that thing locked down because 50 degrees, you know, we run around at what, 98 degrees, our body, 98.6, right? Uh, so at 50 degrees, we're going to have trouble staying warm. <clears throat> so I'm encouraging, if you're going to Central High Bushcraft Guys, which is a wonderful event, I encourage everybody to go to it. Have a good time there. I actually got, if you're in the trap and come see us, uh, I'll be putting on a two hour demonstration up there. So it's a pretty good show. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to catch you up here. Uh, yeah. Uh, John, zippers, layers, buttons, fast change you out for him. Yeah, guys, I encourage you to get your hoodies. I'm a pullover guy. I don't like the zippers, but you, you know, get your zippers because we call this the losing coat weather because. When you, when you go to work, you got to wear a coat. When you get off work, you left it at work or you left a coat in the truck. Then you got another coat in there because you forgot that one. The next thing you know, you got four coats at work because it's so stinking bitter cold in the morning. And then t shirt weather by the evening. And that's what we're experiencing right now. And so I encourage you guys just to pack up. Uh, these I just kind of brought out. Everybody knows what the old white standby lawn johns are, man. I mean, just a pair of these will, will change your attitude. I switched over to the military. These are the older style, they're not the brand new. Oop, the camera. And I love these things. I love them so much, I've got seven pairs of them, one for each day, if you want to do that. <clears throat> but I keep one pair dry to get in the hammock and sleep. But I know people down south, man, you know, you gotta you gotta layer it up. I know it's gonna seem bad, but uh, it's still cold around the fire. And if you're in your hammock you can't be around the fire. Uh, you know, if you're in your tent, you know, some tent, super shelter, whatever, yeah, but come on, man, really. Dress for this. The worst thing you do is never touch it. You know, that's great. You just hold it for no reason. But uh, no snow in lower Alabama. I'm going to send you some this year, Tom. <laughs> we brought some down last time. Uh, you don't get any snow in it, really, uh, no, I thought it was always snowed there a lot. I don't, Alabama's don't get too much snow. Uh, our weather's, we can have feet of it, inches of it. Who knows, man? What, what else? There's James. Hey, man. You don't know what the hot weather predicts. I've seen some crazy stuff going here. Uh, I do predict that we're back in our, what I call the cold system. It's, uh, you look at the blizzard of 78, it got really cold, extreme temperatures. It dropped off uh, when I was bass fishing in the 90s. It never got both freezing for years. Never had a winter ice in my bass boat. And, you know, Lake Erie would freeze over. I used to be an ice fisherman. And we begged, quit ice fishing because it never freeze over. Now, I know the last three or four years, Lake Erie has froze over again. So we're seeing these cold temperatures. The cold temperatures and the high lows I personally seen is 21 to 25 below zero. And that's not normal in Ohio, but it happens. Uh, so it's, uh, we need to, uh, you know, think about that and be ready for it. So if you're coming up here for the event, pack heavy, man, get you the layers on. Layers, layers, layers. Don't be afraid that you took too much and we're going to make fun of you because, like I said, being miserable at night, cold sucks. And there's Hiram. Hey, bro. Uh, it'll be freezing more 63 at night, James said. <laughs> yeah, that's cold when we're not used to it, guys. We just come out of August and, and September. It's been running hot. Uh, I think I'm cold because of last weekend. I started getting used to that stinking heat. When you go hammock camping, you don't go back inside. You know, we're out there for three days out in the heat. And uh, then we had, we've had, uh, uh, I tried to cut grass 
Monday when I got back, got rained out. It's rained the rest all day Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we've got cloud cover up here. And so I could get the mowing done, but I've, I've had an extreme lot of pain. When it, when, uh, when, when, he, when the cold front comes in like this and it gets cold and really damp, that's when it really bothers my spine. Uh, my hips with the steel in there and the arthritis and stuff. So I've been fighting a pretty good headache with my neck in, in the last couple of days. But we'll get over it. We'll fight through it. But it was just, uh, you can tell this weather just put the hurt on. It makes you lethargic. When I was talking to my wife earlier, she's talking to girls she works with. Nobody wanted to get out of bed when it was that cold this morning. You know, they didn't want to get out. It's nice and cold. Nobody's firing up their heaters. That's Ohio. We, we suffer through it. No heat. Uh, I was getting a lot of ice. Yeah. Bo, I'd hate to dag on ice. I've, I've had enough of ice. I'd rather take snow. Yeah, James, it's, it's been damp and cold. And then we've had high winds. And so that even cuts through you even more. I mean, I went out this morning at 6.30 in the morning, let the dog out. That wind was probably 10, 15 mile an hour, 47 degrees. That got me. <laughs> Hurry up, dog, let's go. Uh, it was pretty cold. But, you know, everybody's from a different area. So your layering is going to be different. Uh, you know, I'm asking you, you know, I, I showed you what I wore. I still wear these. These are 100% cotton, but they still they still do a good job. I wore these for ever since I was a kid. And, uh, you know, it's the white standard cotton. These are a little bit heavier than your really cheap ones. Uh, every year I was fortunate my mother-in-law, father-in-law, uh, I love them. I got Long John's for, for Christmas. And because... Now here you live in them. When you work outside, you live in these clothes. Uh, when I switched over to the military, these things here, uh, just so much more better. And if you look at the military, this goes to the sleep system, uh, you know, the, the bag system, this is actually part of the kit. It's keeping them on. Now, this is when I pull out my bigger clothes. I want bagger clothes on, you know, bagger camos, bagger camo shirts. And because I worked outside as an inspector, I really, this is about the heaviest coat I wore all winter. Uh, but I was layered up. And people couldn't understand how I got used to the cold. It's because I, I uh, acclimated to it. I, I, my test, and I don't know if I'm accurate or not, but it seems it takes me about three days to acclimate to the heat or acclimate to the cold. And so sometimes you got to fight it by not wearing a coat. Now, I'm shocked that the cold air coming in as quick on us because like i said it's usually in october you know we get this first cold snap like this and everybody in ohio freezes oh man it's freezing we get the same temperature in in january february people walk in flip-flops and shorts and t -shirts. You know, it's 50 degrees outside because we've all gotten used to it over the winter time uh, uh let me see i'm catching up oh yeah wool socks man wool 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 wool, wool. Uh, there's a long time coveralls out. I'm <laughs> trying to get a lot of the coveralls out of my jump bag. You ain't kidding. Uh, Tom Ruger, hey man, uh, is medical grass league where you're at? Legit it helps some people with headaches. Or are you drinking enough water? Yeah, uh, anything goes. Uh, it's, I think it's legal in Ohio, uh, somewhat. You got a special card, but. Drinking the water, it's it's because my accident really tore my neck up. And I've got a lot of issues, uh, a lot of bone spur on my neck. And it I slept great all weekend out there in my hammock. I come home first night back, slept in my bed, and I've had a headache ever since. It's just the way my, my head's got to lay just right. It doesn't move. This is it. This is as hard as it goes. Yeah, that's it. So I've got to have work on that done. So that's where it's coming from now. And I know it, and I'll get to my chiropractor who'll work it around and loosen it back up. Uh, our problem is sometimes we get first ice, ice, then snow, and it makes it dangerous. You ain't kidding. Yeah, Tom, there's a loose right down Cincinnati for me. I, I do run their pants. I try to watch your sales and their prices. Love their fire hose pants, guys. They're bulletproof, man. And I've got the flex fire hose because I'm a little a fatter. <laughs> Oh, I love them, man. They, they fit good. And when I afford a more pair and I get them on sale, I'll buy more of them. They've got the uh, 
You can put the pads in the knees and they really look good for me, especially doing triathlon. Uh, yeah, Tom, there's not a lot of base synthetics, Johns and polypros. That's what these are, polypros, until they get hardcore, then it's everything, right. And I, I've got a layer of silk long johns I used like on tonight's like this, yes, where you just need that extra, you know, bit. And, and it's 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 a balancing act, guys, because if we layer all up for the winter, you know, or for the nighttime, you know, you got to peel off off as soon as the sun comes up because you don't want to get all that wet. You need to change your clothes and, and suck it up in the morning with a little chili, get you some breakfast in it, and get moving, you're fine. But if, you know, before you go to bed, you want to change back out and close it. And I've been trying that. You know, I've said all these, I've watched all this wild stuff about these guys changing in their jammies before bed. And it's true. All this stuff we're wearing, you know, you don't feel sweaty and it's cold today, but there's still a amount of moisture, you know, where our bodies give off and it's in my clothes right now. So if I can drop this hoodie, go down to my underwear, put on my polypros, and, uh, and these are dry. The, these have been dried all day. And you can, you know, if you're there multiple days, hang them on top of your line, and the air will dry. So I think that's a good thing to talk about. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got some uh, Air Force and wool blankets there. Great. Lower Alabama. Excellent. Wool blanket. Uh, we'll talk wool. Uh, and then it goes and acts down a few more. <laughs> Dan, can we hide where you behind the beard? I don't know. Silk Long Johns. Uh, that's fast. I like stripping on Saturday night. Come on, guys. That's messed up. My wife bought me an Army field jacket with a sun and hoodie, warmest best I have. Yeah, man, when it gets, uh, Tom, I've used military silk weights at night. And I, I think that's the key to staying warm, it is changing your clothes. Uh, when it gets extreme, extreme cold, if you guys look at my videos, I did last year, Christmas Eve, I did an overnighter. It was about about zero degrees outside, and it was like a wind chill of 10 below. And that one was tough. I ain't going to lie to you that that equipment is not for that. But I did it, and it was tough. And uh, I, didn't, I wasn't outside all day. I left the house, got up, set up. So, uh, and I think I was fine on the heat. It was a daggone wind. I was in a snowstorm, and it was just beating the trees to death, and I just constantly flapping the tarp. I had the tarp tight. We try to keep it all tucked in, keep the wind off of me, and I did not have the underquilt protected like I do now, which I don't think the wind hits the underquilt and robs it. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it's tough to do, but it, I had a layer, 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 layer up to do that. Uh, yeah, Bo, my wife loves all the military she clothes. My wife has them from Battle Blackies. I love the military gear. I think it's affordable. We we're going to go into that. I think it's uh, bulletproof. Uh, it, it's got bonuses because a lot of it's camo, you know, if you're going to hunt and, and you know, do stuff like that. Uh, so it, it uh, you know, I believe in the military gear. I was going to talk about wool. This hat's a home front wool, guys. I had it on there all the time. And it, it keeps the sun from beating on my head, but it also keeps the cold air out. I, if I take this hat off right now, I could, my head would be cold almost immediately. Uh, it just holds the heat in. Wool is the is the preferred product. It still kind of outbeats a lot of synthetics, I think. But it's a lot of people itching to get an old antique blanket trying to lay on it and it itches. Uh, Tom, well, oils from your body and grit gets into the tiny pockets and decreases performance. You're correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Trapper Dan, he made his, he did a wonderful job on old military blanket, wool blankets for his, uh, his shirt, wool blanket shirt. He made it himself. It's, it looks great. It looks professional done. And he wears it all the time, you know, because it's layering that wool. Uh, if you really want to get crazy, put another canvas layer over top of it. And now you stop the wind, and now you can follow it. Uh, I've, I've tried to run 100% wool uh, blanket shirts, the one I made, and on the trap line. And, man, you get on these flat 
ground like all that, the snow's blowing across, it goes right through that wall. So you, you need a canvas layer on top. Uh, so I put the wall underneath it, and it just locks it in. Uh, I'm trying to read. Uh, wait, he likes the fleece. Fleece stuff that made, make like a fleece bib. Uh, but yeah, I mean, fleece is good. Uh, I call them my puffy coats. Uh, they're my down jackets. Uh, I like the downs. I have a brand new down vest. I was so happy to get last year. Uh, in the seventies with all the truck driving shows and everything, the down vests were super good. And then they phased out of stock. And I was so mad because I have, uh, my, my vest is down the basement. You should see it. I mean, it's my trapping vest and, and uh, we all wore the poofy vest, and you could put your coat on it. Well, that was real down. And, man, is that stuff warm. And I was so happy to get one for Christmas last year because they're kind of coming back in style. And they don't weigh enough. Uh, the drawback with them is you can't get around too many briars with them and stuff. You know, they're not that you know, tough. But I, I'll put my, I'll put this on, this hoodie I got, I'll put my, war, my vest on top of it. And I can get out in pretty good temperatures with it. And especially if I was wanting to trap out. Because you're always busy. You're always moving. Uh, trying to catch up. Yeah. Got a pair of Army boots. Uh, 13 years old. Extremely warm. Uh, I use a set of Arctic Pros by Muck. Killer boot. Because remember a lot of times I stand in water. Uh, you know, but I'll, I'll have my Mucks up there. I know it sounds crazy, but if we get a ton of rain up there, uh, you know, my they're Arctic pros. They're good for below zero temperatures. But, man, when it's muddy like that and, you know, your feet get wet, it's a miserable time there. So bring your rubbers, too, man. Uh, do 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 shape of the – oh, I don't get it, Tom. I don't see what you're asking for, what shape is the soil. Uh, make sure to not use hard effect wool boxes. Make it interlock. It's like a wearing screen <laughs> unless you have cover. Uh, block the wind. Cool. Good tip, man. Good tip, dude. That's a uh, M bar. Call him 102. He, he's got a tip. You know, hey, man, you put your money, uh, you know, you got to put your money in, in the warm clothes. You got to buy. Um, I have a canvas blanket roll that I made. It's like a cowboy roll to hit the dirt with. It's got my best wool blankets in it. And I've, I've pounded the ground with it. Cold temperatures. It sucks, but it, you can do it. Uh, does my down fit? You pay water. No. But a lot of times, a lot of these vests will not. And that's how they breathe so good. When they get wet, and if they're true down, it's hard on them. They cease working. That's another downside of down getting wet. Uh, you know, I, I usually, if I want to layer up, because the problem is putting... You know, I've got super, I've got the big military Arctic gear. And when you put it on there and you got this hoodie on, your sleeves get too thick and you can't bend and you can't get around. That's why I like the vest. It, it just keeps my core. And so I'll wear that underneath, you know, especially if it's going to be damp or snowing. Or if I'm in the thick brush, I'll put a coat over top of it. But usually come beaver season here, man, it's it's very cold here. Uh, we're dealing with ice and rivers froze and lakes froze. And, and uh, you know, it's it's dangerous work. It's, uh, it's very cold. You get your gloves wet and your mouth from the truck. You know, you always got to have a backup you know, gloves for that. Uh, there's nothing worse than taking gloves off and dropping them off. You know, right in the water. It never falls on the back. It always falls in the water. <laughs> and so, you know, so we carry extra gloves. I usually buy a dozen. You'll see my videos. I'll have these big yellow gloves on. You put the brown jerseys on and then put the yellows on the top. And ever since I fell in the back of my hands, I just have a heck of a time in cold weather. I'm black my hands. Uh, wool socks on your feet. Excellent. Excellent tip. I mean, we know that. A mitten is way more uh, efficient than gloves are. In fact, right on this shelf right there is my backup U.S. military mittens. I have two pair of them. I like wearing them around my neck. You know, when you're on the walk and stuff, put your hands in the mitten to warm again. Because when you're trapping and stuff, you got to take them off. You got jersey gloves on. It's cool. But if they get wet, but we got to have this to be messing with these tracks. A lot of times I have to take my gloves off to do a set. 
And I don't know if you handle steel at zero degrees. You know, we, you know, it's tough. So I, I've gotten good with gloves on the set them, but you got to be careful. So, you know, you just got to watch you, your hands and feet are so critical in this, in this stuff. Uh, it, it's, we've, we've got to learn to cheat with our hands and feet. Oops, sorry. Uh, uh, Long John's, oh, it's moving so fast. Long John's and fleets, yeah. Uh, windproof sweater and flesh, more face down vest, 25 degree weather. You're warm, good. And I, I haven't messed with too much North Face stuff, man. But I do love down. Uh, yeah, that's why I hate about down vest versus wool. Agree with you. And, uh, I mean, you can make a nice wool sweater to even put under your blanket. But it's all about the wearing guy. My downside to wool is this hat will get wet. It takes a long time for it to get wet, but it will get wet. And and I I see a lot of blanket shirts in the survival world, and they're great. They're lovely. I, I like to buy them in nice, but they cost a lot of money. But the one I'm looking at is in canvas. Guess what they sell with it? The canvas over top. And I talked to him. I said, do you waterproof that canvas? He said, no. We want that canvas to breathe. We want the moisture off the wool to evaporate. He said, if I seal it in, now you're going to get cold again from your wool. But the canvas stops the air but still lets it breathe. That's when you start getting warm. If you want to experiment with blanket shirt, build your one out of canvas, put it on the top of it. You'll see warm temperatures. And they build them longer for your hands. You know, they're all up, you know, all covered up. And they build them. So, and I can't remember the name of the company. I looked at, researched. Uh, it'd be pricey, but man, would they be worth it. And he builds them out of the U.S. military bike. That'd be warm. Uh, do 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 the thin slate jackets were proof. Yeah, thin slate jackets. I run all the U.S. military stuff, the, the digital camo, the very heavy with liners. Uh, that's when it's extreme. That's when we're getting below zero, high wind. Uh, uh, see me, I never had a wool really work for me. Say I'm going to pull on 35 John. A great job, man. Please, it's super warm. I run military fleece. I like the military fleece. It works good, I think. Uh, uh -oh, this must one of Dan's buddies made his, made his wife and daughter's beaver earmuffs and mitten. Now we're talking. That's what when you get into going back to fur, guys, I'm telling you right now, I've been at 20 below, muzzle loader shooting with all my buckskins on, wool leggings, wool coat, and rest fur. And physically warm at 20 below, physically hot. I could take my mittens off, uh, load the gun. My buddy was standing there with all his car hearts. It's a vague shoot. It's open to everybody. It wasn't just buck skinners. It's just to raise money for Green County Fishing Game. And we were shooting, uh, you know, an egg shoot. They put them on strings up to like 50 yards, and it's fun. The wind was blowing. It's a ball, and it's just to raise money. And my buddy said, there's no way. He looked down where they had the fire barrels, melted all the snow on the ground, and my moccasins as well. And he goes, you're standing in water, dude. And I said, yeah, I, know. I can feel it. My feet are wet. He goes, you're, you're not cold. I said, no. I took my gloves off to load my, my black powder rifle, and uh, I said, stick your hand in that glove. He stuck his hand in the glove. He says, I got the best gloves Carhartt made, and I'm standing here freezing. we got to go inside and get some coffee and warm up. And he says, you're standing here in all this crap. You've got buckskins on, uh, a loincloth on, two leggings, buckskins. I had my wool leggings on, my moccasins with wool socks. I had my uh, my buckskin shirt on with a shirt underneath it and my capote. And uh, it's on the other wall here. I've got a two-faced coon. My hat comes down the coon here. Another face comes over here, and it goes all the way down half over my back. I built that hat. And uh, totally warm. He 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 about lost. It. He had all branded Carhartt stuff on the that shirt, and he could not believe how warm I was. And my feet were wet. Well, my feet were wet. The wool socks did what they did. I was generating enough heat. Didn't bother. So just a lesson on wool and layer. Uh, it's uh, we catch up here. Uh, still at zero degrees, bare hands, wet hands. 
is a recipe for trouble. You ain't kidding, man. It gets ice cold. Uh, if you guys would have seen me back in my 40s, you know, messing with this stuff, uh, my forearms are huge. You know, you can't, I don't know if you ever carried eight pound coon. It's only eight pounds. It's a gallon of milk. Throw that in your pack and walk back two miles. Oh, by the way, you got four more of them. So, you know, you start building muscle. And the best thing about it is you start getting hot. Uh, I've been, you know, 10 degrees outside and down to literally a t-shirt. Uh, when you're working that hard, man, you're hustling and you're going. You, you're burning. You're burning fuel. Uh, Batesville boots. Love Batesville boots, man. God, they're great boots. I got them on right now. Uh, trying to catch up, guys. Oh, yeah, I have Batesville. I bought down there at Blackie's place, and I'm sorry. We'll have to find that, that link again to that, that uh, military store. Call them, tell them Blackie sent you. Uh, there was good. I had a gasp on my on boots right up. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we've got a layer. And that was the other thing I was uh, – when I went out there this weekend and uh, got to give thanks to – Trapper Dan and Cody, uh, they fed me the whole weekend, had food, but, you know, he, he set up a pretty good setup and took care of me, and uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but, you know, he made chili the first night, and it's hard to eat when it's 88 degrees. For me, I, I cannot stand eating when it's that hot. And I, I was talking to my wife tonight, and because uh, I, I, I wolfed down some chow before I get on here, and, and uh, she stopped by Wendy's, I said, man, it cooled down. Get me some chili. Now I'm ready to eat chili. You know, it cooled down. We we, we got to learn to eat right before bed, you know, when it's cold temperature. And this is where you want the filling. You want chili and mashed potatoes. You want anything hot to get down in your belly to help out. I mean, when it's that hot out there, I didn't want to eat. I mean, uh, forced me. Dan basically forced me to eat. He knew I didn't eat no dinner or nothing. And he actually cooked me uh, four little deer snacks, man. They were good. But it had cooled down. It was 10 30 at night uh but the, you know that's the other thing we talk about is having that high high calorie meal you, you know before bed or at any time to get your temperature back up uh it's uh thanks bro appreciate it rubbing in bro <laughs> he says he's eating steak and salad right now <laughs> thanks we really appreciate it i had a stupid wendy's man <laughs> but it was a. uh, uh you know, they, uh, that, that's the only thing we want to talk about. You know, if you're coming up to the gathering, even if you're not, I mean, it's cold temperature. Think about putting a little bit of extra fat in your food, you know. Uh, you know, nothing better in the morning having bacon and eggs and, and stuff like that, but we need a high calorie to keep us warm all night. So, you know, it'd be good to eat steak at night or a big pull of chili. And do spices work? Here's a question for you. Does hot uh, spices work to warm your body up. I have my answer, my theory behind it. I've actually proved it, but uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the high spice. I I like it kind of kicked up. You know, I don't want to blow your back your head off. You know, so stinking hot you can't taste your food. And a lot of these sauces have too much hot end in there for that just to get the temperature up. But I've grown my uh, ghost peppers and my uh, I had Carolina Reapers last year. Uh, you know, but them are cook to me, them are cooking peppers. But do they increase your body temperature? Well, me and a buddy of mine, about five, six years ago, we're out deer hunting, a bit of cold. And uh, he said, I'm gonna fix your sandwich because we've been talking about it. He, he can eat fire, he can eat gas, like I swear to God. And so I went out in the woods, and when you're deer hunting, and it was gun season, we don't move around a lot, and the longer you sit there, the colder you get. And so he fixed me a sandwich, and he put his uh, uh, ghost pepper combination Carolina Reaper on this lunch meat. And uh, he knows it was too hot for me. But I trusted him. And I sat in that chair until I started to just start feeling the shakes coming off. Woo, it's getting cold, man. And I uh, opened that sandwich up and ate half of it. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't cold no more. And I wanted to see how long the effect lasted. Well, it lasted long enough that I missed the daggone deer come flying at me. And uh, 
I wasn't going to his own house. So something to think about, you know, about jacking, you know, jacking your temperature up a little bit. Yeah, that, that stuff tore me up. It was way harder than what I eat. I mean, it was killing me. But it did help the body temperature. So something to think about. Oh, yeah. Coffee and hot chocolate, man. I mean, I used to be a big coffee drinker. Uh, Dan got me some coffee last day. I drank two cups. Dad going, I was running around like a mad man. I can feel my heart beating. I ain't used to caffeine. I try not to drink it, man. That my, my chest was pounding. I was like, man, I can't drink this stuff. Think I talk a lot now. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, he says, I watched I went back a video about food. And he said, eat the warmest meal right before bed to help you stay warm. Well, think about it. I mean, we all talk about, you know. Having a hot rock below us, radiant heat, you know, that hot food's going to radiate out of your, you know, your belly going through your system. It's going to keep it cold, you know. And if you get underneath the blankets and you change your clothes and dinner, that meal's going to radiate some heat for an hour or so, you know, get your temperature up. So hot hand pockets work great, too. Yeah, Jonathan, we used a ton of them. Uh, I used them down there at uh, Blackie County from my wife. I mean, she's in a 20-degree bag and I said, she set a record for being in a bag 50 degrees out with 10 hot pockets in there. <laughs> I think she boiled a dozen eggs in there while she was in there. I don't know how she stood it. But she freezes because she works inside. She stays inside. You know, she's not acclimated to this. You know, uh, it's very cold where she works. And at break time, it's 95 degrees. She has walked out in her car for lunch and sat there with the windows up, rolled up. At 90 degrees, the sun beating on the just to warm her up. Uh, you know, it's just she don't have enough time to acclimate. You know, and I think it hurts her when she goes outside. She travels working in climate control. She travels and she works in climate control, and then she lives in climate control, which she gets on me about being too cold in here. I like my house more. Uh, our our temperature is set at. 68 degrees in the wintertime. That's what I'm saying. The body tries to resist an increase in the central body temperature. Just to get heat leakage. Atmosphere. You use a lot of big words, man. I pass the heat of the body and wants to raise the body temperature. Right. Basically, that's what we just said. And and if we keep the core good, the limbs will be good. Uh, I've been so daggone bitter cold, man, I can't stand it. You know, especially when I fell in below zero. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole different ball game trap, and I think my, I think I got really used to in the cold. I can tell them the older I get, the less tolerable I am. But I still enjoy being out there. Uh, but you, I know the days that I try to get skimpy, try to get in a hurry, is the days got wet, the days got cold. They're miserable. If you dress for it, took the time, got your gear right, you know, I mean, I would leave work and have to change, you know, into my butt boots and my waders right there in the parking lot. I mean, driving my truck around with daggone hip waders on. And because the first stop on the way home is a water stop. Now, I remember I might have piled snow for 16 hours and got off to go run a trap on. So on the way home, you know, here I'm putting my waders on in the parking lot, relaying my clothes, changing everything. I knew I was walking, that's back when I could walk really good, up and down hills, man, get your heart pumping. It's not that cold out. It's really not. Uh, and you know, Tiger 10, oops. Oh, Celsius or Fahrenheit, she's after. <laughs> the older I get, the less I tolerate anything. You ain't kidding, man. Uh, we tolerate a long time to get this old. Uh, but actually, because of Pam out there is what really got me thinking, uh, you know, about because, uh, you know, she she was texting me too. You know, what should we wear? They don't, I mean, her husband down there don't own a pair of pants, man. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, uh, you, when you live in Florida, why do you need pants? I would never wear pants either. I don't wear pants all summer. Uh, but, I mean, up here, just a little extra, man, because you guys are, their blood's thinner than ours from being out there. That's why they, like Blackie Thomas, can handle 104 degrees down there, you know. 
Yeah, boy, I'm on blood thinner, so it gets colder than you used to. Yeah, man, that's really going to get you. So you really got to be careful, Bo, because, you know, you think you're fine. You go to sleep, man. You wake up 3 o'clock in the morning just, just shaking, you know, and it's really hard to get warm then. I mean, you basically got to sit out in the, in, in the fire to get warm. And uh, one thing I, I, I don't see in the bushcraft world, guys, and kind of blow my mind, is the old red water bottles. I think we talked about that before. Uh, you know, you could put uh, very hot water in there and tuck them in there with you. Today we're using hot pockets, uh, you know, and other means, but, you know, very old red hot water bottles. I mean, that, you know, we, we talk about wrapping our steel uh, canteens of boiling water and wrapping little socks in them and putting them in. Basically the same thing. It's the old water hot bottle. Water, hot water bottle. And that thing will radiate heat for several hours, you know, to get the temperature of the blankets up your bed. Uh, uh, after eating meal, I like to put on my heavy lawn johns and cap and before bed drink <laughs> three shots of whiskey and I'm warm until two. You know the whiskey's not good, dude. You know that, Jay. Uh, that's what it's proven, but I, I kind of agree with you. <laughs> uh, outdoors with Sean. Hey, Sean. Uh, I used to hate being out in cold weather until I found how important base layer is. My buddy gave me cold weather under armor set, and I have an armor with and keep it pretty warm, but I still dislike temperatures below 40 degrees. But it, it's, you're right, Sean, you, you, we're talking a layer right now. Thin, thicker, 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 and layer. Uh, but there's a point where it gets too thick, you can't move, you know, so we've got to watch. I, I wear coveralls over top of my stuff. I try to buy my coveralls, you know, as big as I can, uh, be, only because you got to bend over on the trap line, and if they're tight, you know, you're just squeezing the heat out of them when you bend over so, you know, baggy clothes are at. You can go less clothes, layered clothes, but baggier. And I believe you're, you're a lot warmer. Uh, I'll try. Sometimes breathing cold air hurts my chest. You ain't kidding, man. You got to use it. See this? This really happens. In, in the wintertime when I'm trapping, I always go to beers, not this long. And I've had this a solid ice, ice bath. Could not open my mouth. I could breathe through my mouth, and that's all I could do. And I would get in my truck and come in the house and hold a towel and melt it off. If not, it would break your hair off. It would break your beard and mustache off. I really think it helps with the cold air, sucking in that. It, it kind of like a film that slows it down. I don't know. Uh, John, you're not activated as a 20 below weather, brother. <laughs> that's Jonathan. Jonathan lives all the way up there. He's used to cold weather. He lives in what, Minnesota, I think. Yeah. You got to say, you can't say Minnesota. You got to say Minnesota. <laughs> I'm making fun of guys. Long sleeve t shirt, car vest, winter wear. <laughs> Laugh out loud. I've got the car and heart vest. I like it. I work to work a lot. Uh, uh, sleeping in tents, use hot water and heavy detergent yard containers. Wrap towel around. It. There you go, man. You know, get your water in there. There's your hot water. Throw it in your sleeping bag before you go to bed. And that thing be toasty when you get up there. Uh, at least uh, fire safe clothing on the market. You're right. You got the synthetics are great, but man, being around the fire, my outer layer is usually uh, like a canvas, like this Carhartt, uh, you know, the cotton. Uh, cotton will kill in the wintertime. But the cottons also can handle the, the flame. You, you know, uh, the synthetics will melt to your skin. So you put your synthetics underneath this. <laughs> John I got like Minnesota. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I wear, I was actually going to get it for the show and I, I forgot about it. It's actually out in my, uh, in my gear out in the garage. Is I wear uh, two different kinds of face coverings. And I always carry a heavy, heavy wool hat with me over top of that. When you get around 20 degrees outside, the breath in that hammock, man, will just go crazy. I, I actually, I mean, I'll pull the hat out on my eyes because I'm sleeping and just leave just enough to my nose. And I've had the tip of my nose where I've tucked it in. It's so cold. But yeah, that was the other thing I was going to discuss is I take this hat off, I put on my other. It's a hood like this. It comes all the way down. It's really nice. Tucks into your 
into under your clothes so you don't get them air pockets around your neck. I tuck all that in. Well, it's got a big face. I can pull it up to here. But then I put my big little heavy uh, toboggan on. We call it a toboggan or a trapper hat. And I pull it down all the way. It gives me double laying on my head. I tuck in the whole blanket around me because I'm one of the guys I don't breathe inside my my coverings. You know, I don't sleep with my head under the covers. You're just breathing moisture in there and I can't stand it. I have to have an air hole. And so once I make that air hole, uh, Suge, he's a big hammock guy. If you guys don't know him on YouTube, he actually hangs a piece of fleece from here up to his ridge line while he's sleeping. And he's done 39 below. And you can see his breath, how frosty in the morning is that. And he keeps the frost off all of you from having that. It's like a hanging bed. Man. And you can see just how much frost and moisture come off it. You don't want to be breathing that inside your, you know, you're breathing moisture back in your body. So, yeah, I do wear a lot of face covers. We're just going to talk about that. Sorry about it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I do carry one everywhere I go, even in the summertime. Uh, this is what's funny about these guys. Everybody says they're hot. I, I think they're cool. This beard is cooler on me in the summer because the sun hits it. It's white. It doesn't, it reflects the sun. Uh, but yeah, if I lift it up, I can feel the cold air right now. And it, it's uh, five years ago, I didn't have this. I always grew a short beard and for work. And that was enough to you know, be frozen. Uh, when I started growing this, you can tell there, I had, I did asphalt with this beard and the heat of 350 degrees hit me in the face. I could tell the difference. Uh, my hair was longer than my beard is now. And I could tell when the sun, when I cut it off, sun beating on my stinking neck because I took all hair off. So, uh, baklava. Yeah, John, because I, I run baklava. I've got, I run my BMW motorcycle that go on underneath my helmet. And that's another thin layer that you can put over top of your pillow. And I like it because it lets everything slide over your face real good. But remember, try to keep your stuff you know, kind of loose. Uh, did you see a team last year who went for a five mile run around? Lost one third of his nose from the cold. It was crazy cold, like 40 degrees below zero. Or stupid weather for running. Well, yeah, I can see that. And when, when you're getting in the blow temperature, guys, it's frostbite. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, the lowest I've seen was you know, 25, between 21 and 25 below zero. And I actually had to work on that. I was out in it all night and working on semi trucks, keeping them on. And it was just, you know, I was in my 20s. You know, we could handle a lot more than we could. They, they actually sent a search party out for me. They sent me out with a list of breakdowns and no cell phones. We didn't have cell phones back then. We didn't even have two-way radios in the truck. Uh, we all carried change because we had phone books. And I didn't report in because I was so stinking busy. And they come and found me. They couldn't believe I was still. I did eight hours outside. I had a van I was with. Try to keep the brand warm. Uh, but that was between 21 and 25 below. I said, that's why I said the difference, because it depends where they reported it. I was right in the middle of it. And semis were freezing up, everything was freezing up. Uh, you could spit on the ground and it would freeze off. That's at 25. Think about what it's like 40, you know, and you can lose skin and everything. You've got to keep covered up. Uh, we all talk, yeah, it's great survival and bushcraft and stuff like that. And I can make a decree show. You get down 10 below, 15, 20 below, you better have one awesome debris shot. It better be thick. And I'm talking three or four feet thick. And, you know, because it's going to get cold, it's going to get cold hard at night time. Then we're going to be some major problems. Uh, me and Blackie talked about, you know, could you lay two fires, you know, build a fire here, build a fire here, and you lay inside it. You know, and that would radiate both sides of it. Because we all stand in front of the fire. And it burns you on the front and freezes your rear, you know, so you're constantly changing. So me and Black was talking about, man, too long fires on both sides of it. If you get caught into a freak snowstorm like that and you don't have the gear, you know, but, man, you know how much wood you're going to have to keep, you know, to get through that darkness? Uh, it's going to be a lot of work. You're probably not going to sleep much, but at least you're going to stay warm. Uh, I've been caught like that. I, there's nothing worse. Other than waking up wet, soaking wet from the rain, there's nothing worse than waking up freezing. Uh, so, yeah, 
Face coverings cannot be overlooked in below zero weather. You're absolutely right. I wear them. I, you know, this hat is great. I love this hat. Uh, the drawback between this hat is the high wind because it's got a bill on it, you know. Uh, but then I have nothing around my ears or my neck. So you'll see me, you know, you'll see pictures at me of these vents. I have my face covering on. I mean, whatever. I mean, we got to stay warm. And uh, if it, it, it's just like summertime. If, if we're hot and miserable, we're not going to have a good time. If we're cold and miserable, but I want to try to get everybody's brain freshening up for this event coming up. I mean, I purposely would have an event in January, maybe February, like in traffic class, and it's tough. Uh, the problem with having an event that time of year would be the dangers of driving here. You know, because we call it an event in February, and everybody's coming from down south. Oh, my Lord, the event's going to be cool. You know, you guys ain't used to driving on the highway with snow plows and the ice and, you know, snow. And it creates a bad situation. Uh, like John Frisbee, he's up north. He don't, he don't care about no snow driving, it, you know. But it just puts the added stress on getting here and getting home safely. Uh, but for the people down south, I mean, Blackie was up here. He's seen snow before, but it's been a while. But he's never camped in the snow, and that was – that was one of his bucket list things, you know, camp in the snow. Uh, it's 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 a different monster. You know, he, he does sell in Alabama, yeah, it gets cold down there, but not like here. He, he did 15 degrees now. 15 degrees, uh, he did his first night at 15 degrees outside. So for him coming from, I think he left the house at was 80 degrees, 75 degrees, something like that. And, you know, for him to drive up here, 13 hours later, and then going to spend a night 15 degrees outside. I mean, that's like me going up to Minnesota, up to Josh Frisbee, jumping in the 30 below. You know, my gear's got to change. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've got to watch your face coverings. We've got to watch your hands and feet. Uh, and like I said, bring it. Because most of it, we're not packing this stuff in, guys. We're parked next to our cars. So, so run heavy. And that way, everybody's okay, you know. And remember, man, I'll have an extra gear, man. I'll have extra backup stuff for me. I always do. Uh, there'll be plenty of us there with more backup stuff if you get cold, need something, we're there, man. Uh, uh, it, it was, uh, you're right, bold move. Uh, but black, you pulled it off. That's what we wanted to do. But like I said, we'll have plenty of gear. I just want you to think about the face coverings at night. Because, you know, I think Pam's going to, Pam, you're going to be on your tent or you're running hammer. Because, you know, you got to have plenty of underquilts on hand. Uh, uh, camping on the ground, you get an air mattress, or, you know, an air pad, insulated pad, or whatever. So I, I just wanted to rehash, man. This is the time we're going into it. Make sure you think. Uh, where, where's a good place to buy 100% wool socks? That don't break, you know, break the bank and kind of get uh you know good pair of wool socks and with the money uh i i have good pairs that i've had a long time i have one pair of packers that are super thin and you can't hardly tear them but they're very warm uh the problem was they were never long enough for me they, they act like you walk around in your boots with your socks coming off the feet and drives you crazy but that a pack if you can find a pair of packers I think it's like five or ten times more uh, warmer than the wool is, uh, is a packer. Uh, love them socks because they don't add any bulk to your feet. Uh, you know, when your boots get so tight, you can get them thick in the socks on. Uh, that's one of my corners for the packers. The blue, uh, I did some trading for them. They're kind of pricey. But they, like I said, if they were long enough, man, I would have worn them all the time. And you, they, they wear good. So if you guys can't find a hundred percent wool, uh, look at a pack of socks. Uh, we were, I tried to buy a pack of vests, and they never could get one of my socks. And I was willing to drop a hundred and a half back then on a pack of vests because that's how warm. You know, you know, you know, I guess it's a pack. It's like a wool, but it's, it's a lot more, uh, a lot better than wool. So, like I said, I, wool is great. But if you're not overlaying it with stuff, if you put a canvas top on top of 
And that's what Trapper Dan needs to do. He needs to get some decent canvas and sew him up an over an overline on it uh, with a hood. And you can probably pretty much sleep in the woods with that to a certain extent. So what else do you guys run? I mean, what kind of gloves do you wear? What uh, I mean, he mentioned the boots. Uh, I wear my muck boots. I wear the Belvedere's. I got Belvedere's, and I got the other boots. I love them. Now, the boots I got on are, are lightweight, uh, different boots. I'll still have them on because I'll have wool socks on. Those don't get wet. These aren't waterproof. So you got any more questions on the cold water gear, man? Or cold weather gear? Not cold water gear. Uh, this is what I use. I mean, I, I showed you that. I was, was going to get that hoodie out. I don't even know where I got that hoodie. But then Black, he come up with a tank. It's a tank hood. I forgot about that. That's another one in my pack. It's made for tank operators. And that thing's wrong. I bought it down there at Black's house. Uh, yeah, I've got... Yeah, I, I, I do, Jonathan. I do got my winter base boots here, man. Yeah. I'll probably have them on if it's cold. I forgot it. I bought two pairs of them. Oh, yeah, there you go. Military wool gloves with Arctic over mittens. Yeah, man. Them are killer. I forgot about them. them wool, they're actually up there. The five-finger mitt or the put the five uh, wool glove on and then run your military mittens on the top. Boy, that's a combination. Yeah. that You, you talk about uh, uh, a combination to keep your hands warm. I love the mittens, guys. I mean, when I run my uh, four-wheeler, you know, the mittens on the string, you probably just see them. They're laying up there. I'll pack everything in the thing. Uh, because in Ohio, man, we don't have four seasons. We've got 15 of them. Uh, I have the same. Yeah, hey, Coffins. That, that's the place to talk about. Coffins down at Blackie's. Uh, man, them mittens. They got the kind of like the leather front. It looks like artificial wool on the back. They come up to here, pull them tight. Guys, you got to buy a pair of them. Now, they don't do really good by themselves. It's kind of funny. They want you to have, you know, liner on or, you know, your, your finger glove in there. Man, it does. You know, it just does wonders. You can slide them off and on pretty quick. Uh, but, yeah, Costman down there, if you guys want winter gear, and this is going to sound crazy. We've talked about this before. Down there in southern Alabama, down with black is this Costman. They got more freaking winter gear, gear in that place. I couldn't believe it. Uh for being so in Alabama, no wonder you can't find a winter gear. It's all down there. Uh, George Logger boots, wool socks, union suit, cargo pants, t shirt, either a hoodie as a, or a vest or a homemade and all. Job chooses the gloves. Yeah, because you don't, don't want to ruin a good pair of gloves. You know, you got to always have a trash pair of gloves. Uh, in my cook set, I carry leather, really thick leather junk i've had them forever gloves because they do all the kitchen stuff i'm messing with frying pan I'm messing with fire and you know them's those my sacrificial gloves i can i can handle you know uh that's a pretty good setup man uh, good sean try that man uh you know let us know how you like it in there <laughs> don't take too much money because you'll spend it all <laughs> I know I would uh, love that place. <laughs> well, John just said the same thing I do. Just take 20 bucks, you'll go broke, dude. <laughs> it's it's addicting in there, man, because I have such trouble finding clothes to fit me. Uh, even the military, they've got a military down sleeping bag in there. I get my eye teeth. Well, black, we found one almost mint shape. And it's, it's down, man. These are super warm. Way below zero bags, and uh, they only come up to buy here on me. That sucks. I want one so bad. Uh, I had them when I was kids. Those ones you crawled in, man, and, and uh, hunker down. They're bulky as all get out because they don't pack down good, but they're all warm. Man. Uh, but yeah, uh, keep an eye on your wallet, Sean, because man, you go, I need that. I need that. I need that. And uh, they got all kinds of stuff in there, but they do have a pretty good selection of boots. And anytime I find a pair of boots, guys, it's one of my tips. I don't buy one pair. I buy two at a time. And sometimes three if I really like the boot. 
because it seems like by the time I go back to get more, they're already changed the model. They want to discontinue that model. So I wear them and take care of them until I can't get that model no more. I'm, uh, I've got some black Belvedere pills that are U.S. Air Force, uh, Gore-Tex waterproof black leather, baddest boot I ever wore, wore the soles off of. I sent one out and I never heard from the kid again to get my soles put back on. I don't know what ever happened to my boots. Uh, they are very pricey if you buy them new. They're like $250 per boot, worth every dollar. I put them on the track off without wearing those layers. Mud, water, asphalt, salt, a pile of snow in it. Rinsed them off water hose in the middle of the What a boot, man. Uh, I still got them. I need to. I had to quit wearing them because I had the hip surgeries. And the soles were where wore funny because I wasn't walking right. Now I'm walking right and my legs straight, so I, it'll throw me off if I wear the soles again because I'm done. So just, that's why I don't wear them. Uh, the most uh, outdoor work I do in the winter is loading and unloading. I've been inside now all day. Never tramping through the woods. Yeah. And, and I dress different from work. Work is different than, than doing what I'm doing. We're, we're, we're going to the woods, you know, Central Ohio bushcraft. Uh, I've got my camos on, you know, most of the time, big heavy camos. Uh, I didn't wear camos at work. I, I, I dressed, I wore a lot of Levi's work, which we know is not too good for cold weather. I had my long johns underneath them, long sleeve button up, decent looking shirt, you know, stuff like that. Uh, no, they take debit, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably quarters, laugh out loud. No, nah, man, they, t- they take my debit card down there. So, you know, just try to set your limit, brother. <laughs> uh, it's uh, You'll find crap in here you got to have. Uh, but it uh, cracks me up because we were down there at Blackie's we were preparing for it to be warm. It dropped killer temperatures. My wife doesn't have that gear. We got a pair of military boots, uh, just like mine. Got her the poly pros, got her the camos to bulk up, put the clothes on, she was fine. Uh, and now she's got them for good. You know, uh, my wife does not do, do this. Uh, she don't care about the cold weather especially. Uh, you know, when we were first dating, she couldn't believe I'd go out with a tarp, you know, slept outside a lot. Uh, it's just, uh, <clears throat> after you count the 20 dollars, you know, but you know, and, and I can, I can see it. She's never liked the cold weather. Uh, she don't mind camping. Uh, and she, she, she likes the boats. We like doing the boat thing. So she likes the warm weather, the sun, you know, she don't, she hate, hates my canoe. She said, you can't lay down this boat. <laughs> it's too tippy on everything. And I laughed at her, you know. And she said, you'll get used to it. She said, I don't like no canoe. Uh, but she liked uh, the bigger boats, you know. Uh, get around, you know, do that. She likes going out the lake. Uh, I can't, I have to have shade. I can't stand that sun beating on me in the lake. It's just, we're just opposite on it. Uh, I've always enjoyed the weather. Uh, I remember I've been at this house for 20, 25 years. And I remember jumping over the back fence. There's nothing better than being in the woods by yourself right after a snowstorm. Nobody else is out there. But you got to dress good for it. You know, grow fire out there, have a cup of coffee, kick back, and just uh, detox, like I call it. <laughs> uh, 15 years since I've been in a decent arm surplus store. A bank will be calling me authorized high charges. <laughs> you ain't kidding, Sean. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, they got some deals in there, man. Uh, it, it's worth going. I love, I go to every arm and air surplus store. We have one at the flea market up here. Uh, he's just ridiculous on prices because he's about got a cornered market. Uh, when his wife was running it, she'd work with me, but now she got sick, which I hate to hear that, but he's running it, and uh, his prices, you just can't deal with him. Price, I mean, a Wolby will cost you 35 bucks, 40 bucks for a Wolby. Uh, 
and I just, you know, we'll bike through it high. Uh, you got to watch the wool blanket thing, by the guys. I, I'm not 100% wool blanket fan, believe it or not. I think there's today's synthetics with the down and stuff, with these underquilts and stuff. I think they're better. But the wool blanket you can't beat for being around the fire, beating them up in the brambles. You know, they'll hold together. You'll rip holes in them and they can chew into them. You moss with them. And, uh, but, you know, I just like running my synthetics with my wool. If you combine them, man, it's great. Uh, yeah, but let us know. Hey, we'll talk to you next week, Sean. See how much money you spent. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because we all get in there, man. It's like, the first time I was in there, we got at Blackie's. It was like 9,000 degrees in that building. There's no air conditioning in there. And we are still dripping wet and they're still shopping. It felt so good to walk out doing it. Uh, but, yeah, you get get your brain on what you want. Uh what else, guys? What do, you, what do you think is the best headgear? Now, I watch Suge. He's a big hammock guy. And he's got a 100% down hat he wears. And I thought, man, that just a little beanie. Man. And he loves it. Thing. He says, I wear two. When he was doing like uh, in the 30s below and stuff, he's up in uh, Minnesota too. And uh, I looked them beanies up, and they're just a downfield, just a cap, man. And I think they're like $65 a piece, dude. I can't <laughs> But he swears by them down hat sleeping on. Uh, I went to, I have a trapper's hat. It's a big green trapper's hat. Comes off the top. Got the bell on it. That's traditional, big wide brim on it. 100% wool. That thing will itch your head to death. So I put a beanie on underneath it and I put that on just to keep the itching down on my forehead because it's a hundred percent wool and it's tasty in guys. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Come on, man. We want to know. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Nimrod. Thank Nimrod, Dyer. Uh Even though one of these evenings I'll be able to hang out and keep it warm. 73. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Bo, I got to keep my head warm because I'm bald. Well, is that a factor? Well, yeah, it's a factor. I am not bald. I, one thing God gifted me with is the gift to grow hair. And uh, I, I definitely can grow hair. But, yeah, man, being bald, gee, uh, you know, you got to you know, layer that head up, man. Uh, well, they say, you know, a, a lot of the heat comes out from your neck. And, you know, I've been running my sniper small. You know, it one with holes in it. You can see through it. Love that thing in the heat. And now I got to dig out my regular small because there's nothing better than tucking that thing around your neck, man. Especially when you're deer hunting and that wind kicks up. And you see all the old timers wearing scarves. I got U.S. military 100% wool scarves. And you've seen all the old timers wear scarves. And you know what? The only time you see people wearing scarves now, it's a fashion study. But man, you sit, in the, you know, you get on the ground. And you're sitting there in the fence row waiting for deer, and that wind kicks up, and it's it's 12 degrees outside. Man, you it, the wind always finds that hole in your neck on the back of your neck, and uh, it's another thing, survival thing that we all know what the scars for, what well, the smogs for, you know, you know, a thousand and one things. But one of the best things, especially if you're sleeping in your hammock. And, you know, you're moving around, your shoulders right, and you just got that one little air pocket, man. You can tuck that neck in, bring your blanket up. And when I'm in my hammock, because you're laying, you know, like that, you know, I'm laying pretty flat. It's I'm laying on my back, and if you move your shoulder or something, you get a little air pocket in there. So that smog really tucks that in, you know, gets that up. There. Because standing up, your heat's going to rise off this. But that's another thing we didn't mention, the scarves or, or the smog or a a little scarf worth it, absolutely. When we was kids, everybody wore a scarf to tuck all that, keep that air in your coat. Uh, uh, it's a uh, bald is beautiful. <laughs> Swim faster, get better mods, <laughs> and a convertible <laughs> high speed low drag. Ain't that better than having hair, brother. <laughs> uh, because uh, I'm bald. If my head sweats, I go out in the cold and it doesn't feel good. I heard that. 
Uh, I was at a hunting camp, deer hunting. And it was it was cold. Everybody dressed heavy when it warmed up. And he was carrying all his gear and he was sweating and the temperature dropped. And he got back to camp. And I mean, this guy's bald. He don't have a stitch here on his head. And he had a 100% wool hat on. He took that off. It looked like his head was on fire. You could see the the moisture and the, just the steam coming off his head. And that shows you how much we're losing of heat. I mean, he had a heck of a walk and dragging a deer. And he was ringing wet when he got back to camp. But when he, when he took his, his cap off to cool down, you could just see the, the steam coming off his head. You don't see a lot of that, you know, because I got hair. But it was just amazing how much heat he was generating. Uh, the hunting camp teaches you a lot. It teaches you, you know, when you get six days out in the woods and the temperature in the house up and down like this, uh, when I was a kid, we didn't have a conveyance. The four wheelers just side by side, the trucks. We carried them in. Well, now we're driving a truck. We're parking pretty close where we're at. So it's good to, you know, I was doing a lot of uh, lean to camping. And, uh, you know, you could stock your stuff there. Get up in the middle of the night, put on nothing with it. Uh, <laughs> That's messed up, Bo. We're going to have to get you some hair tonic, brother. <laughs> Cures everything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just take off my hat right now and I can feel the cold air on my head. That's how warm my head is right now on my hat. So, uh, you know, I wear a ball cap a lot. I don't drive in this hat because it hits the back of my chair and drives me crazy. And the ball caps have no value. I mean, no value on heat and cold. Uh, it sucks. But, you know, we've got to, we've got to worry about our scarves. We've got to worry about our gloves and our feet. Uh, I want you guys to come to Central Hall and have a ball. I don't want you to see miserable and stand there shaking to death. Uh, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, uh, fellowship. You know, that's, that's, I love that word, fellowship. We all get together, two things, and have a ball. I mean, I encourage you, if you can't make Central High next year, go out there to, to uh, Midwest Woodcraft. Uh, it was a good event. Uh, you know, some of you guys are closer to that. Uh, we went to Camp Craft Outdoors this year. That's in Bethlehem, Kentucky. Another great event. Killer hot. It was cooking. I'm, I'm, I'm melting and black. He's like, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm melting down, man. Uh, it, was probably, it felt like about 98 degrees, a thousand foot mid. That's got heck. And there you go. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Flowers. Running around there like nothing because he goes to the jungle, man. He, th- he said, Yeah, it's kind of warm out here, but it ain't bad. But he goes down to Bolivia, man. You know, uh, it's, it's all about your makeup and where you go. I think he lives down in North Carolina, anyway, or something like that. Uh, South Carolina or somewhere, but you know he, he's not used to heat. He said, "Yeah, it's hot up here." But he's going to give me the UV drink to keep me hydrated. So there's your question for you guys: Do we need to hydrate in wintertime? It's too bad going cold to drink cold water, you know. But I get a headache the same if I dehydrate in wintertime, and you probably dehydrate faster in the wintertime than you do in the summertime, it, you know because we're trying to heat our bodies up so much. Uh, we still got to uh, drink. And it's hard to drink cold water, so we all heat it up. Uh, but, yeah, we've got to watch the hydration. I mean, I was really watching my hydration last weekend. And I still uh, was suffering a bit. But I was drinking my hydration pack, plenty of water. Uh, I think I was having trouble with eating. And I was, I was slowing down because I wouldn't eat. Uh, but, yeah, we've got to watch our hydration. So bring the hot chocolate. Bring the hot teas, man. The teas are good for you. Uh, you know, your normal stuff. I mean, if you drink coffee, then make big pots of coffee. You know, keep it warm all day. I don't think it's going to be that bad, but I've seen it. I've seen it at 70 of snow that, that night. I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm not trying to worry you. Just be prepared for it. Uh, Hopefully, man, if, if this weather would hold, this is great camping. Though. 77 in the daytime and, and uh, you know, 50 at night. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you might not notice you're sweating in cold weather. That's what we're talking about, Sean. Better have your own drinks warmer. It's better to have your drinks warmer 
in cold weather. Yeah, it is. It, it warms your belly up and it, it'll keep you hydrated. Uh, but that's it. You know, we, we I know because I go to events and I talk to everybody and I can't show it up anyway. But and so I, I lose track, especially if I get in a big meeting. Uh, and even travel down was on because I didn't eat. I didn't eat. I didn't eat. But I was talking business, talking YouTube, talking products, and everything like that. So, and I just don't focus on my eating, which is very dangerous for me. I do that all the time. Uh, it's more cider season in Vermont. What are you talking about? Mole? Mole? M U L L E D Mole? I don't know what that is, dude. I know we have apple cider down here, which I love. Cider is a liquid laxative to me because I drink a half a gallon at a city. Uh, yeah, go get them. Bo, you do the same thing I do, man. Heck yeah, man. Uh, you know, this first temperature drop, I woke up in the morning. Like the froze, and I gotta have my ginger tea because it's hurting so much. Uh, that's the first thing I drink every morning is ginger tea, and it, it really helps with the arthritis and stuff like that. And what was funny is, uh, man, I said, Man, I feel like a good can of chicken soup for lunch. It just because it dropped temperature now, it's time to eat the lunch. We got comfort food, so I just you know got me a can of chicken soup for lunch. That was good, it, it warmed me back up. Uh, John Frisby, yes, at North Pierce, Minnesota. Uh, so what we can read out about him buying boots. Here's a freezer that works well in the woods, too. I've huh, never heard of them. Bath, Bath and Anger, boots, something like that. Uh, cider mixed with spices, and sometimes booze, no booze or not. Cool, never heard of that. Mold, mold, mold cider. If I'm pronouncing that right. Never heard of it. Cool. The booze, you know, I mean, you know, every cowboy movie out there since we was kids, you know, here it's cold, take a swig of that. Well, they've proven it's hard on your body, hard to keep warm. Now call actually bring your temperature down. But <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you gotta watch it. You shouldn't be getting drunk in cold temperatures like that. Uh, you know. So we really got to watch out. It's, uh, uh, you know, watch the alcohol. But, yeah, I, I've drunk alcohol when it's cold. It does seem to warm you up. Uh, but they say proven it doesn't. It actually hurts you. Uh, not too much of a drinker. You know, I've, I've drank at these events. I try to keep it limited. Uh, I don't like the alcohol that well. Uh, you know, there's some uh, spirits running around. You know, some clear stuff. Uh, I enjoy a little squig of that every now and then. Kind of helps relax the old body, you know. Uh, I think that's a lot of it. We'll, we'll work hard and stuff. and It's good to take a couple little shots of that and then go crawl on your hand. And you'll sleep good. Uh, cold, okay. Mold, like cold. Okay, thanks, man. I never heard of that. It's amazing. Well, I love you guys, man. We're all from a different part of the country. We all bring something to the table. I, I was in a conversation the other day, and, and uh, guys were referring to other guys. These guys ain't that good. You know, they were, they were new to the bushcraft world, you know, and, and, and I thought to myself, man, that's a bad way of thinking because some of these newbies have come out with a new idea. Everybody brings something to the circle. And I, I look at everybody that they bring something to the circle. I don't care if you're Day one in the bushcraft or day one in the hunting, we all bring something into it. Uh, the only difference that makes us different from the newbie is experience. Uh, I was a newbie. I was a newbie trapping. We all were. Now, I just happened to do it for 45 years because I was too dumb to quit. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I've I seen times where I was snaring coyotes and the snare was costing me $3.50 and I was getting a dollar for the coyote. So I was losing money every coyote call, and I still do. Uh, you know, I was getting a dollar to two dollars for a coyote. That's how bad the fur prices got. But I knew to keep my numbers in check, keep my coyote population right, 
you know, taking predators out to keep my other game up. I, start, I noticed that the groundhogs were going away. A lot of small game was going away, so I put the herd on coyotes. And, yeah, I lost money on the snares, but I gained it the next two years in the game. So there you go. So was it worth the loss of money? Yeah, it was. Uh, thanks, Bo. Appreciate that, man. He says, looks forward to every conversation. Uh, guys, you, you're the ones making this, man. I'm going to tell you. I mean, I just, I like to talk. And everybody knows that. But I just, uh, I love these conversations. I really think it keeps the dust off our brain. Uh, you know, we got a lot going on out, out, outside. You know, we're watching Facebook and Twitter, and, and I'm on Twitter now. Gee. And, you know, with everything going on, the stresses of that, I try to make an enjoyable channel that we can learn from each other. Uh, trying to, that's why it's against the law to mention the C word on this channel. Uh, it's a dirty word here because, uh, you know, I want to stay focused on, it's an entertainment. You know, it's time for us to detox from the real world. And let's talk bushcraft, knives, guns, whatever. I don't care. You guys know I'm all over the place. The channel's out no more outdoors. It ain't no more anymore. Uh, but that's what I'm trying to, uh, uh, I follow Blackie here, but you can't make me go back. <laughs> well, it's good, Anthony goes. Uh, now, me and Blackie are very tight friends, man. We are really tight. And his knowledge, I mean, you ever get him, just, you know, get him especially getting him alone. And number one, he's a big soul. Number two is knowledge. I make fun of him because he's so little to, to me. Uh, but he stands on a stack of books, man. You know, his knowledge is not that tall. Uh, you know, and I, I, I think why we associate each other because he grew up really dirt poor, I grew up just poor, <laughs> so there's a little difference. And, you know, we had cars and we had houses, but we didn't have nothing extra, and so you know, money, money was tight. And Blackie, I think it makes you a better person because that's why his knowledge of camping, you got to hang around the right camping people, but you had to make do with what you had. You know, and that's a big factor right there. Because that turns your brain on how do I fix it instead of running out and buying uh, You know, well, I ripped my hammock, I just get another. Well, number one, he didn't have the money for the first hammock, so he made his first. You know, same with his tent. You know, we all did. We used to call them forts and go, we go play in the fort. You know, you know we're going to do an overnight out here. We went camping. Uh, uh, I discovered Dan and William Collins because of Black and myself. Yeah, uh, did a lot of work with him. Uh, that was a good team. Uh, still know William, still friends with William, still talk to William. Uh, he actually, he helped me kick me in the butt about bringing up Lutz Skinner. I don't tell that a lot, but, you know, I did a lot of work with William, did a lot of life testing with him. But he also told me, he said, your design is your design, man. Do it. So, I mean, he was one kick them in the rear, do it on my own. And I appreciate that because I've sold a lot of knives, especially on my first round. Uh, we've had some problems with the C word, you know, with the steel and everything, and that's starting to change and lighten up, so we're back on it. Uh, yeah, Blackie talked me in the 1858 Remington. Uh, Blackie, I have a walker, uh, walker to groom. I sent it to Blackie, tuned it up for me. The guy just knows black powder pistols. Uh, I don't know if he's on there or not tonight, but he beat me out of a real nice mouth. Like. <laughs> He'll answer. If he's watching, he's going to answer because if you watch the answer, come flying up if he's on there. <laughs> but it was, uh, he knows the stuff. Uh, you know, when you get around, you start picking out the people. And you start surrounding yourself with people, your knowledge goes up fast. And I didn't, uh, hey, Hammerhound, how you doing, brother? Uh, I was fortunate enough to hang around the old people and listen. And I think that's helped me all up there. And I was thinking about when I was teaching the class last weekend is, is guys who've never trapped, never even done nothing about trapping. I'm talking to the novice. And I thought to myself, it took me years. And one of my favorite sayings is I stand on a pile of mistakes. It took me years to get this far advanced. And when I'm teaching a class, I can take you and eliminate a ton of mistakes to get you to come up fast. You know what I'm trying to say. It's, 
And that's where the experience is at. That's where the teaching is at, is to bring you along in my thought patterns. I, I teach a lot on thought and understand the animals and stuff. And people think it's all about the traps, and it's not. Uh, probably tie shoes and <laughs> much more. There you go, James. Uh, I was actually depressed and I started watching y'all bushcraft and help me get. That's good, man, because it's a good hobby to get into. Uh, probably you, Dan. Cool, man. Uh, but it, it, it's it's a good hobby to get into. And I, I, when I got into uh, buckskin, I couldn't afford to go out and spend $600 on a buckskin coat, so I would make them. And I really enjoyed that. And I do this with the... With the Survival work. Yeah, you know, we buy a lot of knives and stuff like that, but I still like to sit down and readjust my tools and, and make different tools and stuff. You know, to, to that's what's fun. Uh, you know, I was watching a basket being made this weekend. It'll be on the video. I mean, it's it's a wild basket. How they make it out of the, what was it, Virginia creeper? Uh, that guy knocked out that basket in an hour or so. Nice basket. Uh, uh, but we look forward to time with Dan Thursday nights, break from the chaos. Yeah, thanks, Pam. But that's what I try to get you guys. You know, just quit thinking outside. And, and you know, I try to bring the guest on here to, to help us. Uh, still working on that. I got to get some emails out and see if I can get some more guests on here because I, I, I really enjoy the guests. They bring them in. Uh, but it's, it's about bringing some more knowledge to the table. It's always about bringing knowledge to the table. Uh, I, I know Trinity's starting her own company about sewing this bag together. Uh, you know, she's done, she's doing a wonderful job. She's been on this channel. It, it's odd to see girls in the bushcraft, you know, area. And that's what I like to see. I, I had, uh, three ladies in my trapping class and when I sit down and we talk to them after the class and I proved that ladies trapped just as much as men did. Uh, you know, I showed them it's not a general area in sport. And I, I think there's like, really, man, we didn't, you know, because it's all about the mountain man. You know, it's never the mountain women. It's about the mountain man. But when you actually talk about the trapping, and, and, you know, the women had a trap when the guy was out home, at, not home, trapping and hunting. You know, she was trapping coons and the mink to keep them out of the rags, to keep them out of the feet. You know, he's trapping mice to keep out of your food. If you're trapping a mouse, you know, a little bit of a mouse trap, in your house, you are trapping because you're doing the same thing everything does. You see the signs, you see the droppings, you're going to bait him in, you're going to set the trap, you're going to get him. It's no different. It's the same principle as that as the grizzly bear. So the women did trap a lot. They trapped a lot of them. You know, so when, when, they, when they see that, they go, well, I never thought about it like that, Dan. Well, the books I read, they, it's necessity. Their husbands might be gone for a week, two weeks. Daniel Boone was gone for months. You're leaving your family behind for months, six months. How do you think she, you know, they don't tell the story of Daniel Boone's wife, you know, with eight kids. You, you know, you just, you don't hear that story of it. What about read? You know, why didn't she write a book? You know, what, what did she do? You know, uh, that would have been an amazing read because, She's not the man. She, you know, she didn't have a gun to come protect herself. She, she didn't know how to trap or, or take care of the animals or, or even have the kids go out and hunt and bring food. And she know how to dress game and clean game and stuff. Well, you bet your door she did, man. You know, I, I would love to hear that story. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's good. I'll try to catch up. Uh, bushcraft is just... <laughs> Doing 30 minutes walking, 30 minutes a day challenge. It's all open. You're ate up, man. Uh, uh, Bo, I'm on the same way, brother. And, and, you know, I tell everybody, you know, I've been broke up. Uh, I had a lot of issues. Uh, I get winded fast. I, I, it's hard for me to walk very far, uh, but I do it. The key is, Bo, you got to keep doing it, bro. And, yeah, there's times I, I miss, especially when it's heat hot. But, you know, you got to do it, man. It, it is therapy. It's therapy. <clears throat> if I can't get out in the woods and I'm hurting bad, 
I'm still trying to learn off YouTube or something like that. What's the next upcoming thing that I can try? Uh, because I am a survivalist, because I am self-reliant, I think that's my favorite two words, self-reliant. I don't like the word bushcraft. Maybe woodsman's better. It's because, because I'm hurt and I can't bend over. I have to adjust and build tools. Like I can put my tent sticks in now without getting on the ground. I build a tool for that. Uh, I can pull them out without getting on ask it somebody, come here, man, put my tent sticks in. I like the thought process and where I lack and adapt and overcome that problem. That's what I like about it. I, I know there's times we hurt, man, this last rain's been killing me too. Headache, neck problems, but it's the adapt, adaptation that I enjoy, you know, because I can't do certain things. And a lot of you guys have been around me, and you guys want to, you're really, to, I'll get it, Dan. Let me pick it up for you, Dan. And you'll hear me get grumpy when I start dropping stuff. I get mad because I got to pick her up or I got to go get and I drop the lid on the water bottle and it <clears throat> aggravates me to death. And you guys are really good to help me out and help me out. But there's times I do it on my own just to see if I can't physically do it, then I'll figure out a way to do it. And that, that's the enjoyable part. It's it's fun when the plan comes together on that. I'm catching up. Uh, so, Bo, just hang in there, man. I mean, we all got to get through it, man. Uh, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, when you get into this group of people, I've not seen arguments. I'm, you know, I, I told you, I, I drag race and I fish tournaments, and it was all about competition. Uh, this is guys were you know, great killer. Mike Benny's one killer bow drill guy. And he's not aware, you can't do a bow drill. Get out of here, man. You know, he's like, you trying to bow drill? <laughs> Next thing you know, you got 10 people running, try this, man, do this. You got to do that. <laughs> and that's, I tell you, I can't, I, I know I harp on that a lot, but if you haven't went to an event, don't be shy of going. Uh, I, I've had some guys standing off of me just in Midwest Wood Cup. They were standing there looking at me. And, you know, and I was like, yeah, man, can I help you? He goes, man, you're Dan Lutz. I said, yeah, well, yeah, big deal. And he's like, no, man, we, I watched Mikey's video and he was on the video. Come on, man, let's sit down and talk. I'll talk to anybody. So don't, you know, I, that drives me nuts because I'll talk to everybody. And, uh, you know, run this guy, Susan, uh, uh, you know, the tech world. Uh, what are they doing there? You know, these guys, uh, I need help with websites. So it all brings something to the table. Uh, I'm trying to catch you up here, man. Uh, uh, appreciate it, Eric. Uh, he says, you know, he loves my videos. Uh, still working on them, man. Uh, been tough this week. Uh, uh, <laughs> my fiance. Is the best trapper out there. She got me. <laughs> well, you know, in the trapping world, dude, uh, Sean, we call him incidental uh, hits. <laughs> Maybe she didn't want to trap you. <laughs> Maybe you just got caught, you know. Uh, just bust me, man. Uh, uh, like I said, if you can't do, teach, and you're right. Uh, he's the one that kicked me in the rear end to get me to start talking about this stuff. Uh, and, uh, Someone send down an old people's grabber stick thing. <laughs> What's bad, dude, is is I have two of them, and I dropped both of them. And then I started cussing. I called my wife. I said, what am I going to do? I dropped my grabber. Wouldn't get my other grabber pick it up and drop it, too. <laughs> I sit in a chair after surgery. I couldn't get out of the chair. It was a bad day. And I will admit I was cussing in. Because uh, <laughs> I had two of them. I had my back up there and knocked them both on the ground. And then dropped the remote on the floor. I couldn't hardly walk right. It was bad. And it was a, it was a bad time in my life. But <clears throat> when you dig deep as a trapper and you dig deep as a woodsman and you dig deep because your old lady's just mean and she tells you how bad you really are and you're a tough old bird, you, you understand what I'm getting at. You get through it. You know, uh, zero minute in quiet woods beats a weekend in the house watching TV. I've been TV free for two years now. Could not be happy. Man, hammer around, that blows my mind. I mean, James Bender's the same way. And I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I was addicted to TV. And I've been really trying to wean myself off of it, but 
I've got to have the noise in the house. A lot of times my TV's on just for noise, listening to watching it. I don't know why it is. TV rots your brain. You ain't lying. Good one, Sean. <laughs> uh, you ain't lying. Uh, there's some garbage on some TV, though. And I do like occasionally watch a movie. I've never been a big movie buff because it's always outside. It was either working on cars, trucks, something. Uh, trapping season's two and a half months, man. That's skinning, trapping. Then we go back in the fishing season. And then it's catching fish. You know, change the strings, get the boat ready, go out and catch white bass. You know, put the white bass up. It's just a vicious cycle every year. I just can't quit. Uh, but I, I believe TV hurts us, and I believe uh, the video games hurt us. Uh, the kids today do not experience. I was having a conversation with my brother uh, the day before yesterday, whatever, about you know, got to be home you know, when street lights come on. Well, we didn't have street lights, <laughs> so, so it was. Uh, but we were, it was too hot in the house. It wasn't air conditioned. It was easier to stay down by the creek where it's cool, running around getting wet. Uh, you know, I remember being soaking wet in the wintertime on them wet snows and coming in and throwing your gloves and stuff on the furnace to dry up and get something to eat and go back out there and play again. You know, uh, I killed my TV over a decade ago. Man, I don't know how you got to do it. You ever tried to sleep on the bed of, Coles like Jeremiah Johnson. Have I personally done that? No, I have not. Uh, there's a good video on that process. It's one. It's one of the things I'd like to try, but you got to watch some of that on YouTube. Uh, the best video I found on that is uh, uh, Survival Russia. He does a great video on that on the Coles. That's a lot of work, guys. Stay warm. But I understand why they did it. Uh, you know, you're know, you going to melt the ground below you. you got to have a heck of a cold bed. It's going to take you probably four hours just to get ready for bed. You know, get the coals cooked down, get enough dirt to put on it. Uh, love the movie Jeremiah Johnson. It's an excellent scene. You know, didn't put enough dirt down. Seen it right off. <laughs> you know, I'd have killed that old man. <laughs> but he was teaching him a lesson. And so, yeah, there's a theory, but look up Survival Russia. Look back, you know, it's probably two or three year old, maybe four year old video. Uh, so look it up. Uh, last movie I saw was Last Rambo. If they come out, I'm doing Mad Max, I'll still check it out. No other movies interesting. Uh, my ex son in law was a big movie buff. He would tell me about movies that I'd like, and I, and I did. He, he knew what I wanted to see. I, I like a lot of the facts, uh, I like seeing facts, uh, you know, documentary stuff like that. But, uh, I watched the movie Fury uh, yesterday. Had a monster headache. Just turned it on, listened, closed my eyes. It was about World War II tank. Brad Pitt's in it. Excellent movie. I said, watch it. Uh, if you're into World War II and understand what went on, I mean, it was, it's pretty gruesome. I mean, there's some nasty stuff that goes on there, but it's a war. You know, they're fighting each other. But a, a pretty good plot. So I, that's been a movie I've watched in a long time. Uh, a lot of my movies I watched, like when I watched Jeremiah Johnson, that's probably one of our mainstays. It turned us, most of us, into the bushcrafters or worse than we are today. Uh, but I took the movie as, with a grain of salt, and then I backed it with the history of The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Loved that movie. And they took history and they put pulled this part and this part and this part and this part and put it in the movie. But if you know the history, then go back and read it. And you're like, dad, go on, man. You know, that's what I like. The movie's entertainment. It's just a wash, guys. It's just for an entertainment. It's when you go back and look at the facts. That's when it really gets, it puts a lot of the movie together. <clears throat> Too many TV, uh, commercial for TV for Little Noise, Radio K. If I want news, I just check out the internet. You can rent a movie. And and you're right, Hammerhead, that's what I do. I've got uh, Netflix, uh, Voodoo, uh, I got all that stuff. I don't have cable. It's all run through the internet. <clears throat> and my wife likes to watch her cooking shows. Uh, the Hell's Kitchen, Master Chef. She got me hooked into them. The finale's just went over. Uh, you know, but that's something that I'll sit down and watch her with her. She likes that. Uh, I've been, you guys know, I've been full with your GMRS radios. Uh, I took this to, with me out to Illinois. 
it was cool because I could, uh, you know, we were talking a couple weeks ago on my uh, GMRS radio. This is my favorite thing. Wednesday, mostly sunny. I was scanning the weather, the weather bands, and they had a tornado last year during the event. Come right down the road from me. I mean, right down the road from me. They showed me what went through. And it freaked them out. They have no basements there, you know. Uh, but that's where the GMRF radio goes in. So, you know, we talk about you know, too much weather. I mean, when you get on GMRS and people are talking about it, uh, I turn it on at night and just listen to it. And then turn it off for a little bit. Uh, the radios are cool. You know, the shortwave radio. Just listen to this conversation. I, I love it. Keeps me away from the TV, too. Uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> but I have to keep, keep careful how far to go. My arms are really, really hairy. <laughs> well, I think that's that Neanderthal in you, but <laughs> uh, I didn't see that normally, man. Uh, that's funny. You guys cracked me up with some of these comments. I wouldn't expect, I was reading it. What the hell? You got to do with that hairy arm. Oh, man, whatever. Uh, that's funny. The Patriot was based on true revolutionary here called. Uh, called the Swamp Fox, and you're right, and that's that's why when you see a movie, you watch the movie, and a movie's a good movie, like Patriot is good, it's an entertaining movie, but then when you read the history, it's like, oh crap, these guys went through some stuff, some bad stuff. Uh, uh, I got a book called Mountain Man, 17 Tales of Survival. That's better than any movie of Hollywood since 1967. Man, I'm going to have to find that. I ain't heard about that. Set Mountain Man 17 Tales of Survival. Still in print? Anything? If you know, I mean, we can look it up online. And uh, the book called War on the Run about Ranger. Rogers Rangers, yeah. Uh, did a lot of reading on Rogers Rangers. I, I might have read that book. I got in depth with Rogers Rangers. It was kind of. Uh, Amazing what these guys pulled off. Uh, you know, John Wayne was in it, made a movie of it, uh, but that didn't even do it justice. Uh, the leader of that, I can't remember his name, is Rogers, but when he, Ray Mears did a, a, a video on him about building a raft with nothing, uh, he tied withies. Withies are a very unique deal out in the woods, but he, he had to burn the ends. He had enough to get a fire going. But he had no axe or saw or nothing like that. And he rafted down to save, save his men. Uh, Mountain Man book is a good one. I have it too. That's a good book. Uh, uh, or talking about the Patriot with Mel Gibson. I love that movie. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Uh, I, I, he got me stirred up now. I have to write that down. Mountain Man of 17 Tales of Survival. I've got to watch that because. You guys got good books out there, and I, I do have trouble reading. Not that I'm dumb, I've got dyslexia, so it takes me a long time to read a book. If I can get the, uh, you know, the, the voice, oh, man, I love it. The, I can't even think what they're called. You know, the e-books or not the e-books, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I really like that. I've listened to the Bible uh, at nighttime through my phone. I really enjoy that. It kind of, uh, back when I was a kid, probably 13, 14, 15 years old, we all had stereos in our room. Uh, you know, if he's lucky, you had a stereo, and I had to use one. Eight track player and an album on there. We all listened to albums back then. <clears throat> but like at 10 30 at night, uh, they had oh, I name it, Midnight Mysteries or something like that would come on. And uh, maybe it was 11 o'clock. And I would turn that on and turn it on. It was it was like uh, Sherlock Holmes, murder mysteries, stuff like that. But you had to use your imagination. You know, they described it as your imagination. Uh, man, when you can do that, you know, you build your own story in your head. I really, I, every night before bed, I turned that on. A lot of times I fell asleep, you know, before it was over with. But man, I, I forget what they were, but didn't have a lot of related to bushcraft, but it was like, you know, you could listen to that story and you had a picture in your head. 
and I'll throw a few to that. Really? The Mountain Man books are five bucks on eBay. Man, I'm gonna have to look at that too. Uh, the Foxfire series is awesome. I also read all Dave Campbell's books. <clears throat> I've got all the Foxfire books, guys. I've, I've had them for years. Mine's a mismatched set. I never could buy the whole set. Excellent read. I still pull them out and go through some of my stuff. Uh, Dave Canterbury books. I own them. I think they're sitting. Some of them sitting right there. Uh, I've got a new medical book I've been reading. Uh, the Dave Canterbury books, by the time I got his first survival, it, it's a good read. But it was a basic read for me. Because we, we've already passed a lot of that stuff we've done. And not, not dogging the book, it's a great book for a beginner, you know, and then he progresses into that. They're great reads. They're kind of an easy read for me. Uh, uh, Pam said, we get our books from Invent Calendar. We found on Old Captain, my captain, can't wait to read it. Walk at 23 to go. Huh, I heard of that. Oh, when the weather gets cold, take your heavy coat, turn the sleeves inside out, and zip the coat. Over your foot for a hammock for an extra layer of feet. Excellent, way, Excellent. And you brought that up. I've seen Shug do that, too. You know, it gives you another layer of protection. It makes you basically a foot box for your hammock. So, good one, man. Throw in the two cents because them two cents are worth a fortune. <laughs> I love the two cents, man. See you, Way. Have a good one, man. Uh, Lewis Lamar Western Rolls. Not heard of him too much, though. Uh, well, and there you go, Anthony goes. Uh, Fox Fires is more of a documentary than a, than a story. Uh, I, I really look at the facts, and I think they were doing a pretty good job on trying to record the Appalachian and how the people got by. You know, they got moonshine in there. They've got all kinds of shingle making, you name it. And they were really trying to catch it. They knew it was going to be lost. Uh so I, I have referenced that over the years when I was doing buckskin and stuff. Uh, I've collected the books. It's taken me 30 years to find them at the flea market, find them here. Excuse me, traded for them, ordered them, you know, try to get my whole set. The Foxfire books has got a lot of good information. But, yeah, it's not really a book for me, uh, you know, as, as a, an adventurer. Uh, I'm reading the... Revenant, the story of Hugh Glass, awesome, way better than the movie. Uh, the Revenant, man, I could not stand that movie. I've read so much on Hugh Glass, everything I could get my hands on, and then watched the movie. It it, it kind of sickened me. And then I had to say, wait a minute. It's a Hollywood movie. Uh, okay. It was a good movie. It's a cool movie. But I think it hurt Hugh Glass's reputation. Him running around on the ground and grunting and I, I don't know, guys. It just it just didn't, you know. I watched the movie. I, I paid money to go see that movie, and it's just that they didn't get it. I was looking for the period correct, and it was, and that's what made me mad. It was a good movie. It's a good movie. Uh, just wasn't what I thought it was. Uh, I went to. Uh, you want real survival books? Read the Foxfire books and stories and tell them great. Depression and living out for some months. Well, that's what the Foxfire books are. Uh, you know, I was fortunate, like I said, my grandpa grew, uh, grew up and lived through the Great Depression. And so did my, uh, one of my mentors, Victor Berg. And I used to sit and just listen to their stories. And then they would get to talking to each other about what they did. Victor Berg grew up in Tennessee, so dirt poor didn't even choose. And my grandpa grew up in the city of Dayton, Dayton, Ohio. And he actually belonged to a gang, gang called Zinga Avenue Aces. The depression was so bad, people stole like crazy. And after school, like I said, my grandpa raised five brothers and sisters with no parents. They died off them. So after school, he belonged to this gang, and the store owners would pay them to help protect from thieves. They all had their areas that they did. And there, I could go on about the gangs that, they carried knives, but they didn't want to cut you. They didn't want to stab you. They wanted to cut you thin. They knew that long, deep cut down your arm hurts more than being stabbed. And these guys knew it. And they had some mean gangs and some fighting. But the thieving was going on something fierce. So store owners would hire these guys. 
you know, to protect them. You know, they walk around the story with these people playing the steel block. So, you know, when you start reading about stories about the Great Depression, and, you know, like I said, I talk about what's going on right now, there will be a lot of questions about that. You know, what if? What if we do see another Great Depression? You know, are we ready? Uh, you know, that's where my trapping class comes in. If you've ever heard of trapping class, you understand I bounce back and forth because my grandpa taught me a lot about trapping during the Great Depression, so the book of birth. So, you see what I'm getting at? That knowledge is probably lost. It's a killer lot. But if you can find them books on the Great Depression and how they went, there's another YouTube channel that me and my wife love to watch. And it's an old lady. She's pretty old. And her grandson thought to watch her cook and what they ate. She has now passed on. What a great video. She carried a knife to school every day. Uh, a steak knife to school every day. It wasn't for protection. It was to collect the dandelions on the way home from school. They ate dandelions seven days a week. So she would go through different vacant lots picking the dandelions at the roots, the whole plant. So that that's interesting. Can't imagine carrying a steak knife today at school at all. You know, you get a lot of trouble. But the, she carried that steak knife and she could dig out them, them uh, roots every day. So them's the stuff I really like about. And she shows the recipe on how to take. If you've got one quail, can you feed four people with one quail that big? The people in the Depression could. They'd make a monster meal. My father-in-law, uh, he was young as 10 kids. I mean, you talk about stretching meals. And, and i never seen a man have empty cupboards in his house and now, come on in, man. I know you've been working hard. It's cold. Been out hunting all day. Come on in. I'll whip you up something. Man, you ain't got nothing to eat. Yet. Sit down. And they and if you didn't say no to these people. They're going to feed you. They were used to not having nothing, but food meant full belly half the time. And he could whip up something out of nothing. And my mother-in-law does it to this day. You know, that's what we got to look at. Uh, catch up here. Laser rifles, <laughs> Kali, mutants, American flag, that thing is just exploding through the stars. All dumb, all fun. <laughs> like, all dumb, all fun. Uh, talk about eating onions and cornbread for six months at a time. You talk about eating groundhogs, and that was a privilege. It was. The meat is the privilege. Uh, we, we eat a lot of meat today, but you can't imagine taking one groundhog and getting seven days out. Think about that. And you wanted to fathom that. You know, people talk, I see on the show alone eating rabbits. And man, you, you've got to look for the big, heavy, high fat animals, bear. Bear was probably a bear cross. I caught the tail end of the Waltons the other day. And John Boy killed that bear. It's an old one. You know, they were out turkey hunting and he couldn't shoot a turkey. You know, he felt bad for the turkey. And when his dad got attacked by a bear, he killed it. Yes, it's a TV show. But you can imagine during the Great Depression killing a black bear. You know, they knew they sold the hawk, but look at the fat content off that bear. You know, that would have been invaluable for them people to talk. Uh, Trapper Dan, the Revenant book is way better than the movie. Couldn't put it down. Sweet. Might have to get a copy of that try to get through it. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, I really listen to them and, and read them. And books are always better than the movie. I, I don't know if you use your imagination to show more detail or uh, or they just talk more detail in the book. You know, uh, my daughter's book, my daughter's the book is big and two days. Uh, she's a reader, like my wife. Uh, but when it gets into the facts, I can read. Uh, James, Bear is good. Bear is excellent. Uh, remember, in the survival situation, we've got to say, one, nothing like a Big bear steak, you know, with fried in its own grease before bedtime, especially if it's cold out. Uh, I've seen my grandmother go to the kitchen with empty cabinets, not much food in the, uh, in the refrigerator and make a whole meal. I don't know how she did it. Well, I don't know how they did it either. But they just, I got a little of this, I got a little, and it tastes good. And it's usually really filling. I was talking to Trapper Dan about, we were cooking, cooking chili and made some really good chili. Uh, but I told him about the mashed potatoes. You know, we would put my grandma every Thursday night during we over at her house eat chili mashed potatoes, and that was one of their survival supplements of depression. 
because potatoes are very cheap. You could scrounge up whatever chili you wanted to. You didn't have to have beans in it if you didn't have it. But it was eating that to fill your belly up. That's nice, hot, warm food. You'd sit down and watch the walls and go home. You know. Uh, <laughs> love this channel, sir. Keep up wealth and knowledge. Man, I'm glad you think so. I <laughs> know, oh, man. It's just, I, I, I think I was kind of crazy. You know, when my buddies wasn't around, I kind of hung around the old guys because I'd listen to their stories. Just like you guys are listening to my stories, I listen to theirs. And them stories were fascinating. Oh, I didn't have to do that. Because even at my age, I never went hungry. We didn't have all the money. I was a single parent. Didn't have all the money, but we always had a meal, you know. But when's the last time that you couldn't eat for three days? You know, you watch some of these old flicks and you know, people on the trail, man, you got any food, man? I, you know, I haven't, you know, eaten in three days. You're like, uh uh. But in the Great Depression, they did. And a meal was saying, you're welcome in. My grandma was the same way. When you come in, you eat the first thing I want. Oh, how you doing? You eat yet? Want something to eat? Sit down. I'll get you something to eat. No, I just ate. No, sit down. I'll get you something to eat. There's something about that mentality that you're not leaving this house until I know you're full. Until I know I fed. That's and my father-in-law, my mother-in-law is the same way. When you get around the old tech, you know, the old timers. Today we take food as, as you know, granted, there's so many fast food, we all got a couple bucks in the pocket. You can always stop by and get something to eat. But you, you've got to look back at that time. You know, that they were very adamant you was going to eat or they were going to get mad at you. I mean, you insulted them when you didn't eat. You know, at least eat something. That way they knew you left out there and you'd be fine. Uh, that was bred into them. Though. So uh, it's a. Uh... There you go, Trapper. He read the book before the movie was disappointed. Yeah, you're with me on that, Trapper. I mean, you know, I read a ton about Hugh Glass. Uh, imagine growing up in the mountains for miles, chopping down a tree, shaping it into a rare railway tie, dragging it down the mountain for 75 cents, 90 cents for a good day, <laughs> 12, 10 to 12 hour days. Uh, and I think it made character, guys. These guys were true blue. They were, they didn't have nothing else to do. You, you know, and, you know, they had to provide for the family, if you had a family. Uh, last book I'll throw, throw out at the Hatchet series by Gary Paulson. I've never heard of that either. I need to write these things down, man. I'll look back and again, I'll go back to there. Um, those are the stories the Foxfire books tell if you need them. They, they show you the basics to get through there. You know, that, that is a written document, uh, you know, about that. That's good, even though it's a fiction, you know, but it does make you think it gets the dust off your brain, though. Uh, uh, Reinhardt, no. Uh, that's because I'm doing my own thing. Uh, uh, a lot of my designs, I, I helped him with a lot of designs. I helped him with a lot of steel. That was a great course. I love William to death. He helped me out when times were tough. Uh, love that man. But we also have an agreement, you know, that I'm going my way and his, he's going his way. And we need to do that, guys, because my designs, uh, you know, it's his designs. You know, ultimately, it was his design. I want to do my design. Uh, nothing wrong with that. He looked at the Lutz Skinner. Uh, he showed, you know, he liked it. Uh, he shared it. He shared my videos on his own channel with my Lutz Got a lot of flack. Can I buy one off William? No. That might be down on the run. That. If I see enough interest to buy an upper L Lut Skinner, that's where it'll be made from. Uh, you know, that's who we'll make it for. Uh, but for right now, I'm trying to make an affordable knife for everybody to get into it and get in the, in the skinning and trapping room. So not at this time. Uh, and, you know, I, I see William event. I talked to him on the phone. Uh, but, you know, he, I told you, he's the one that really pushed me to – he loves my design, but I'm a trapper and a skinner by trade. I'm not a bushcrafter, so the knives are different. Uh, and, you know, so that's where I want to be at. 
and, and he's right. Uh, that, that's where we'll be at, standing on my own. And I appreciate everyone who bought Watts Kennel, man. I love it. I got it on right hand. I wear it every day. Uh, a lot of people like it not. Uh, the Hatch is serious about children's books. Not really much realism to you. Like reading Jim Kelgard. I don't know him either. You guys are some book learning, book learning people. <laughs> uh, Phil Bowie has a series, and they're easy reads. Might have to look him up, man. Because nothing wrong with entertainment. We, we can still have entertainment, man. But sometimes you get entertainment, and maybe you come up with an idea. Maybe you'll make that idea a reality. I mean, it's kind of crazy because if you look at uh, Morris Kohansky, wrote a book, and I actually carry some of his, Morris Kohansky's little pamphlet books in my haversack. And when you look at that, he wrote about the survival, his opinion of the best survival. And one guy read that and built it. And I can't remember his name, but he built the scoop of the and That's based on Morris Kohansky. So if you get something out of that, you know, even though it's a fiction deal, but maybe something out of reality will come out. Maybe it's the tools that come out. Even that's a thought. Uh, he said, I found real value in the Hatchet series. and uh, They're easy to read. So, you know, that's why I said, I always try to keep my mind open and, and try to pick up on these things and read between the lines sometimes. George Washington Sears, I've read his book. Uh, sometimes read between the lines. It, it, it sounds funny, but you, you get in the mind. Of, of his, where he was thinking it. Uh, James Bender, we all know Grateful Survival, and he's got a series out there, and I just watched his last series come up last week, and uh, on the 18th century, you know, guys traveling. You can kind of hear where you're going. Uh, you can kind of hear, in books, probably give you a better mindset the way they felt, uh, you know, about you know, were they scared? Were they hungry? Were they, you know, miserable? They want to go back to see their family. I don't know how I could leave my family. Like if my daughter was, you know, 10 years old, my wife said, Man, I got to take off. I'm going to hunt for two or three years. I couldn't imagine, you know, so you get the mindset of the books. I think it helps us out uh, when you're reading about. Uh, Jeremiah Johnson did a lot of writing. People don't realize Jeremiah Johnson came back to town and wrote books. Uh, I think I told that story before that uh, when I was 17, 18, getting in the buckskin, and, you know, I went to the library back then. We had a library. had a library call. And I, I went to go see Jeremiah Johnson, that, and a curator, a person. I don't know, them books are private. You got to make an appointment. I said, why? But back then, it was considered liver eating Johnson. It was candle. And so they put him in a different area for people couldn't read. So I had to make an appointment to read about Jeremiah Johnson. And some of, if you read his actual writings, are very hard because they use like a different language on them, different words. But it was very interesting to live it. You know, he was a true character. Uh, when we find that kind of knowledge, uh, you know, one of the best stories I, I remember is him and another trapper were running the trap line up the mountains. And they said, man, we got a, you know, huge storm coming down on us, man. It's thundering like crazy. Let's go ahead and stop. Set up camp, hunker down. We're going to be in for gully washer, man. Storms lightning and everything like that. And the storm come by, and the storm lasted three days. And it never rained. And what it was was the buffaloes going through this pass at a dead run for three days, 24 hours a day. Jeremiah Johnson talked when they got down to that pass that they were walking in meaty dust where the buffalo had turned up. That's the stuff that. You know, it's just amazing to me. You can't imagine Buffalo running for three days. You know, cost that rub on them. Who knows how many Buffalo went through that pass. And the churn up, you know, meat eat dust. So, them's the stuff I like to try to find. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. For young teens in the 1920s, most famous Big Red Disney didn't. Did a movie on it. Huh. Never heard of that either. Guys, all these comments, I go back and look here and I pull them up. Uh, yeah, I love that set of James. He's a wonderful series, guys. You need to jump on, catch up on that series. 
And it's taken him up to eight or 10 hours to edit one of these videos. And he's putting big time in going to the authentic places, guys. I mean, he's driving. He's driving to Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana uh, to get to filming location. The, the boy's putting in some serious hard work. And I very encourage you to watch it serious because it's like almost a documentary like you watch on PBS. Uh, so, uh, uh, The Lost Ways books. Good stuff in there. I forgot about that book. Yeah. Uh, good information on medical use of plants, run law, or nurses and find the practice. Yeah, the lost ways. Uh, I've got a couple of books. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, she she writes one of them. She's good. I met her once. Uh, I, I, I can't remember her name. How late does the string go? Oh, crap, man. It goes to 9 o'clock. Daggone, guys. Who is my timekeeper here, man? Where's Jonathan Frisbee out? We're going to have a long talk at Central Ohio Bush Cat guy. <laughs> guys, I didn't realize that time, man. It was a good conversation, man. Man, somebody's got to keep an eye on me. I'll talk all night long, man. Oh, man. <laughs> he, he's over by 10 minutes. Nobody told him. <laughs> Nobody tell him. Shut up. Trap, man, you should have been up jumping on me, guys. I'm trying to keep it for two hours. Uh, did not mean to come down and you see go pour books off stuff like that. I gotta go back and look at these books, man. Uh, guys, uh, you know, I hate to cut it off, but I try to keep it at two hours. I really do. Uh, when I first started this, I did three hours. Uh, old Tom uh, taught me how to uh, dress a boar so that he was a here's a diaphragm, you have to cut, cut it all the way around, it. yes, and and hopefully. Uh, 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 and able to join Josh and learn. I don't get that. Uh, I've got my skinner done. Uh, I can I can do a deer. I haven't seen the movement. My brother's talking up north. You know this cold weather gets deer moving up here. Been really trying to eyeball some deer. Uh, I'm gonna get on the road call list, and you guys get YouTube will see me uh, how to skin this. And I'll be out of practice. I guarantee it. I'll be out of practice. But it's uh, I gotta get in the swing and need deer meat put up. So I'll be on the hunt for some bumper bumper deer, some chrome deer, what we call them up here. And uh, you know, hopefully I'll get there, guys. I gotta get back this. I wasn't even flipping my bag on uh, banners or nothing, man. I I was in this good good, and it, you know, uh, guys, got to end the show, but I gotta change my thing. You guys know the rules here on my channel. You know, I ask for one thing, one thing only, and that's five minutes of your time before we go to bed. Remember to say a prayer for our first responders and the people on the front line. We got a lot of stuff going on in this country, man, and we need a lot of prayer right now. I don't mean to get religious on you. Don't know the religious week, don't care. But I think five minutes of prayer. We've had some sick people on our list, on our Facebook friends get sick from the C word up here, and we need to share that that power. And I, I just I just ask for five minutes of your time if we go to bed, you know, and uh, get my watch on the front line. We have people on here that are police officers and first rescuers. You know, they're the first one in line to come after you. Uh, you know, yeah, I get tired of them too. I say it every week. I hate to have them behind me because I've been speedy, but they're the first one there. So, guys, I want to make sure you guys do me a favor. That's all I ask of you is five minutes of your time. To get them done. I want everybody to be safe out there. Uh, you know, these are done only because you guys listen. <laughs> if nobody was on there, I probably wouldn't do a show. So it's all all to you. And I want to thank you for all sitting around listening to some old dude just talking. It's a great conversation, keeps us away from the world. Uh, you know, uh, I want to try to do this next week. Uh, you know, well, God willing, I'll be here next Thursday. Uh, if you guys want to talk about a topic, maybe we'll. We'll get together and I'll, I'll push out a book or something. You know, we'll all talk about the book. Uh, some of the reads. You guys, suggestions come out, hit me up on that. Get back to my comments. But I want to thank every one of you for doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, I had it. I'll see you guys next week. So I went over. Uh, so we got some good reading to do. So we got a week to do us some reading. So, guys, appreciate every one of you. I uh, want to get off here. Uh, like I said, man, thanks to everyone of I appreciate every one of you guys that you gave to me. 
to do to me, to do with me on this show. I'm getting tongue tied now, man. Uh, so, guys, thank you very much. And we'll see you next Thursday. Bye.